Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the City of Palaka Commission meeting on March 28th, 2024. I'm calling the meeting to order. The invocation will be led by Chaplain Mulberry, who is in Zoom land, Chaplain Mulberry, and then a Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Jones. Father, again, we thank you for how good you've been all day. You bless us to come together once again. And again, we say thank you. Father, we pray for directions, for instructions, and for the wisdom to be able to lead this city further. We pray, God, for the diocese and those that are in leadership uh, place. Remind us of who we are and who we represent as it relates to uh, your purpose. We ask, God, that your spirit will be with us and go before us and help us decision making for this purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Ms. France. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. Commissioner Tammy McCaskill. Here. Commissioner Justin Campbell. Present. Commissioner Will Jones. Present. Commissioner Rufus Borum. Present. Mayor Robbie Correa. Present. All members are present and accounted for, and we have a quorum, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Krantz. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes from March 14th, 2024? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. We're going to move on to public recognition presentations. Ms. Kranz, the first is Final Womanhood Month, March 2024. Request to see Phi Beta Sorority, Inc. I think I can see that. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I present to you and the members of the City Commission a proclamation to proclaim the month of March 2024 as Finer Womanhood Month in the City of Palaka. Let this proclamation stand as a testament to the enduring legacy and the invaluable contributions of finer women, and let us collectively honor and pay homage to their exemplary dedication to excellence, moral probity, and the advancement of all women. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you, ladies. Would you like to come up? Hi. <laughs> and would any, any of you like to speak about this kind of womanhood? And if we can have the ladies come in front of the dais and the speaker at the podium. Mm -hmm. Is that okay, Mayor? Sorry. You should not do it. <laughs> Good afternoon. We are the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Zeta Mu Zeta Chapter of Palaka, Florida. And we are honored to be recognized as Final Womanhood Month. Our principles include scholarship, service, and final womanhood. And we are excited to just continue to impact our Putnam County community. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Our next proclamation is for National Safe Place Month. Ms. France. Yes, ma'am. And we do have uh, members of CDS Behavioral with us here today. I would like to present to you and to the commission a proclamation for not to, to, to proclaim March 2024 as National Safe Month in the city of Palaka. We call upon our citizens to promote the program and we encourage our neighboring communities to establish safe place locations. Thank you. Do we have a motion? So, second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Angela Williams. I'm the residential supervisor at Interface Youth Program in Palaka. We are a safe place shelter in Putnam County. And so there are several locations, our um, all right solution, our public schools are approved for safe places and several community um, organizations are approved as well. But we house those runaways for a 35 day stay into our shelter. And we also provide um, counseling services as well. So we thank you for this proclamation and we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Our next proclamation is for Water Conservation Month. We do have representatives of the St. John's River Water Management District, as uh, well as our uh, city's wastewater and water treatment plants, Madam Mayor. This proclamation that I present to you is for Water Conservation Month. And we ask that you endorse and proclaim the month of April 2024 as Water Conservation Month in the city of Palaka. And we call upon our citizens and businesses to help protect our precious resource by practicing water safety measures and becoming more aware of the need to save water. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you, Mr. White. And if you'd like to say a few words, sure. then we can go up and take a break. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, Council. This is the 26th year of the St. John's River Water Management teaming up with local city and uh, county officials to put out the word of water conservation. This year's theme is irrigation. Seems kind of crazy. I mean, as the city manager knows, replacing pipes, sewage, water treatment plants, all of that, septic to sewer, extremely expensive. So why irrigation? Because 50% of our fresh water that we drink is used for water in the grass, is for our um, local businesses watering the plants. We can do better with this. This is where we can we can really make a difference because the ultimate goal is the same. We want to pass on to our kids and our grandkids clean water, the beautiful resources that Florida has with its springs, lakes, and rivers. And that's why we team up to do this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. She's already done it. We do have another proclamation for Natalie K. Park, retired from HCA Hospital, of 34 years of service. Um, but she has already received her proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you. And thank you for delivering it, Commissioner Jones. <laughs> so again. In the spotlight, employee of the month, Ms. Jones. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. And once again, we just come to this point to where we get to recognize one of our employees on different aspects that we're observing um, in their performance. One is exemplary work, professionalism, and de dedication to the quality of work they provide. So for the month of March, we would like to rec um, recognize for this month, employee of the month, our street superintendent, Mr. Daniel Nicholson. Yeah. Hey, sir. Good evening, Commission, Madam Mayor, Mr. Nicholson. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, I, I was a little mean 
to Mr. Nicholson and, and my reason for having him here is actually the second to last item on the agenda. So he was kind of anticipating being here a little longer, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the public works staff had, had kind of collaborated to nominate Mr. Nicholson as the employee of the month, not, not just because he's an exemplary employee, but because of his willingness to, to step up and fill a void in a need when, when we needed that help and to provide stability within our department. Um, we've had a significant amount of turnover uh, within our department, but Mr. Nicholson has has been the, the steady hand there to shepherd our new staff and, and basically filling in areas where he probably really <laughs> didn't anticipate being. Um, he's done everything from being the facility superintendent stand in to being the facilities laborer, streets laborers, stormwater, um, any position that we need. Uh, Mr. Nicholson is, is there and willing to fill those roles uh, without question. And even tonight, you know, with the reason I gave him to be here, he didn't bat an eye. He just said, I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, for that, we, we thank you for everything we do. And uh, we hope that you bring much more and we hope to see more from you because we believe that you are a wonderful person and one of the best employees You're that I've well. seen. So thank you. Thank you. The notes I got tricked into. I don't have anything to say. Y'all got me in this one. Surprise! <laughs> Thanks, everybody. But there's Thank no one. There's no one. Uh, no. no. <laughs> Look all that gold in there. He's got a lot of gold. <laughs> Next in the spotlight, Mike felt in retirement, city of Palaka, 40 plus years of service. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, thank you for having me back. It's an honor to, to do this for you. They wrote this, just so you know, in advance. <laughs> Mike Felton was employed at the water treatment plant with the city of Palaka August 8, 1980 through October 29, 1982. Mike Felton was rehired on October 7, 1983 as a water treatment plant operator and has been and has since continued his career with the city. In addition, Mr. Felton obtained his Class C drinking water treatment plant operator license in 1981. <laughs> Class B drinking water treatment plant operator license in 82. 82. I was away from I was away from here. <laughs> and class A drinking water treatment license in 1984. Mike entered the retirement drop plan on June 1st, 2019, and continued his employment with the city training and mentoring new operator trainees while performing his duties as a class A operator. Mike has received certificates from Florida Water and Pollution Control Operators Association, University of Florida, Michigan State University, National Rural Water Association, and California State University in Water and Wastewater Treatment, Water Supply and Wastewater Treatment, Water and Wastewater Utility Management, Lead Notification, Corrosion Water <laughs> Quality, Lead Leaching, and Water Treatment Plant Operation, respectively. Mike has also completed FEMA certifications for I-402 Incident Command Executives in 2002, IS-700 National Incident, Incident Management System, NIMS in 2005, IS-100 Inter Introduction to Incident Command Systems in IS-200, Incident Commands for Single Resource and Initial Action Incidents, both in 2009. His dedication to his career in this community has been one of exceptional endurance and uh, perseverance. Please join me in celebrating the retirement of Michael L. Felton after 40 plus years of employment with the city of Palaka. <laughs>
Lots of treasures for you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you want pictures? Well, I was told I had three hours. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't realize I had accomplished all that. <laughs> Let me do some pictures. The whole family. He's got to come up with the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can I can photo bomb. I'm good at it. I'm gonna get it. Cheeseburger. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for thank your you. thank you for your time and your service, dedication, commitment, and really want to thank your family for um, letting us you utilize your uh, services to provide the needed services to our community. So we thank you for everything you've done. Continue to do. Thank you. How are we going to replace the uh, institutional knowledge? Forty years. <laughs> yeah, I think that's possible. City manager and administrative reports. Update utility assistance program. Thank Ms. you, Scotty. Madam Mayor. Mr. And Dell. If I can, uh, just to introduce. Which Go ahead. While you're coming to the mic, yes. Um, I wanted to point out that, uh, and even though a, a um, email was sent out, that uh, there was an item that was originally on the agenda for the ladder truck and for the fire department. And fortunately, through the diligent work of the fire department, we went ahead and leased a, a, a replacement. Um, we thought we were going to have to come back before. Uh, the commission because of a long-term lease, but the repairs were able to be done. And so we were able to remove that item. Um, but I did want to compliment the fire department for pushing that issue and pushing it forward. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that uh, you will see on the uh, website some new additions, uh, but I wanna come back to that after we finish the uh, updates on this program. So if you would start us off, Ms. Cardi. Of course. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, everyone in attendance. Uh, I'd like to give an update on our exciting program, Utility Assistance, that has helped uh, our community. Uh, we retained a consultant as Carate Consulting started accepting clients on February 11th. Even though the program itself officially started March 1st, uh, as of uh, March 28th, she had served 37 customers, but as of one week later, March 28th, the total assistance increased to 75. So we have been able to help 75 uh, residents here in the city of Palaka, three from Clay Electric, 36 from FPL, 38 from Gas and Authority. So as of March 28th, uh, the program has helped um, 75 customers with 77,625. And that leaves us a remaining 60,000 that we will help the city of Palaka with utility assistance. And we'd like to congratulate our consultant, Crystal Azakarate, because this is a pilot program and we are working out the kinks and it's, it's very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, um, end of 2024 legislative session briefing, Ms. West. Okay, thanks. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, as you know, the legislative session has wrapped up. And so I'm going to briefly cover some of the bills that we have been monitoring this entire session. Next slide, please. The first one that did pass is the alternate mobility funding systems. 
This bill prohibits local governments for charging for transportation impacts if they are not the local government that is issuing the building permit. However, um, the portion that really does affect us concerns impact fees. The bills that provide the local governments adopting and collecting impact fees by ordinance, it must be based on localized data that was gathered within the last 12 months. Um, so that means that we are coming up on that deadline um, for us to update our localized data so we can continue to legally um, charge for impact fees. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the, uh, there were several bills regarding um, the homestead property tax exemption, and the first one failed. Next slide, please. However, the next uh, House Joint Resolutions did pass, <laughs> And so this, you will see this um, on the ballot this upcoming November, uh, it must be approved by over 60% of the electors. And basically it will propose an amendment to the constitution to authorize the legislature to require an annual adjustment to certain homestead exemptions. So um, that will be on your ballot this upcoming election. Next slide, please. We were pleased to see this one fail. This was a bill uh, relating to land use and development regulations. It amended a whole bunch of regulations relating to comprehensive plans. As we work into our visioning process and updating our own comp plan, we certainly didn't want to be bound by uh, the state restricting us. So we were happy to see this one fail. Next slide, please. Another one is the land use and development regulations that failed. This would have required the automatic rezoning of all ag land for single family housing in certain circumstances, preempting your ability to regulate agricultural land. Not a huge issue for Placa, but certainly would affect Putnam County, which of course affects the county seat. So it was good that this one failed. Uh, next slide, please. Local business taxes, this is one that we were really concerned about. This did fail. Um, this would have taken away our ability to levy our local business tax, um, locally known as our BTRs, which is a big revenue source for the city of Palaka. So that did fail. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Local government actions passed. Um, so we are now going to have to file business impact statements, which is something we've always had to do, but now we're going to have to do it for all of our city-initiated comp plan amendments, which we're going to have to do, and all of our land dev development regulations. So um, that we're going to have to basically get with an accountant to determine what all the business impacts are going to be as a result of our changes to our own comp plan. So that's going to be a little bit of a burden that we're gonna to have to keep in mind um, as we approach the budget. Next slide, please. Municipal water and sewer utility rates, fees and charges, this did fail. And I'm sure that uh, Palaka Gas Authority folks were happy to see this fail. However, this is one of those bills that comes back session after session and we can anticipate it coming back next year. We'll keep an eye on it. Next slide, sovereign immunity. This did fail. This would have bumped up by double um, the, the sovereign immunity liability for people that would sue local government. So it would have a, an impact, a negative fiscal impact on the city. Next slide, please. Residential building permits did pass. This is basically going to really fast track um, the residential building permit process. And that's going to put a little bit of a strain on our planning director. Um, so just one to keep an eye out for. Local government impact fees failed. Um, that was going to require to ensure that any impact fees collected must be relevant um, to the property area service for which the city was assessed. This is already kind of codified in statute. So I viewed this as a duplicative bill because you still have to have a rational nexus for those impact fees. Next slide, please. Vacation rentals passed. This was an attempt once again to try and undo um, the state's preemption of the ability for local government to regulate um, vacation rentals within their jurisdiction. Um, it did implement a limit on a $150 per unit for processing an individual registration. Um, and some municipalities were charging a lot more than that, which the state legislature felt was gouging. So this put a cap on that. Next slide. Trees on residential property. This was a, another attempt to undo a state preemption on our ability to regulate tree removal on residential property. That failed. So that state preemption is still in place. Next slide, please. Oop. 
And finally, uh, Commissioner Borum was, was good to point out that this is an important bill that uh, he's certainly been monitoring the unauthorized public camping and public sleeping. Governor DeSantis signed this into law uh, just very recently, and it prohibits local governments from allowing public camping or sleeping on public property without certification of a designated um, public property by the Department of Children and Family Services. So we're going to have to take a look at this and go ahead and probably pass some ordinances to have that certification process in place. Yes, sir. With this particular one, how fast would something like that, how fast would we address something um, within our city? Let me pull up the bill and see if there are any mandatory deadlines. The bill doesn't go into effect until July 1st. Um, so we'll probably have some phasing time periods, but I don't know off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll report back. Thank you. Madam Mary, if I may, I wanted to just bring to your attention that we have received an agenda request from the city's lobbyists to come and also provide a further legislative update in the May meeting. Okay. Is that it, Lisa? That's it. Any okay. questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's certainly needed for the public to be able to understand and know a lot of times, you know, bills and other things, they're doing things in Tallahassee or DC or whatever that may be. You guys are being uh, educated on what we're involved in and we would like for you guys to get more involved as well. So you'll be impacted if some of these bills pass. So I think want to thank you for bringing that before the community so we'll keep these type of things rolling. I do want to say thank you as well, but I also want to see if this is something that we would be able to place on our website for the I'm sure the our webmaster PIO can make that happen. I, I will note in appropriations, we did not get a line item funding for ride solutions. Uh, yeah, I saw it's where other, other recreation failed too. Yeah, it's not good. Thank you. Um, update Hank Bryan Park, Mr. McMillan. Good evening again, Commission, Madam Mayor. Um, no major updates on the park itself, although we've been endeavoring to try to find a, a more, I guess, fiscally responsible solution to the design of the restroom. Um, I think in the last meeting I'd mentioned that the solicitation came in at 30. $9,500 for design uh, from the open bid for the restroom. We've gone to our continuing services contracts as well. Um, their prices are between thirty dollars and $40,000. So at this state, we're working directly with the county engineer um, to hopefully have some interagency uh, function to actually create the design and bid specifications in-house um, at significantly reduced cost and potential benefit to both the city and the county. Um, so we're working with them actively, and uh, we hope to have at least some preliminary um, sketches that we can potentially uh, get some direction on for location, um, and then we can, you know, create our documents for a bit. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions of Mr. McMillan? <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Update Jenkins Community Center. Um, as, as we are uh, still waiting on Department of State approval. Um, and the delivery of the air conditioning equipment, there has been no major changes at the Jenkins Community Center. We're still set for the May 15th delivery time for the HVAC equipment. Um, that contract is, is ready to go and executed, um, but with the roof and the uh, um, fire suppression, uh, Department of State is still not returned uh, response. Any questions? Yeah. Commissioner Jones? I, I know the last meeting I mentioned the floors at the gymnasium. Um, and Ms. Cutright said that it would be other funding for it. Have we identified where that funding is going to, that funding source? I have not. Well, Mr. Yeah. Cartwright? Yeah, we allocated money in the building maintenance fund for the to operate the floor. We got about 19000 that's set aside for the use for different things in the building maintenance. So more specifically, um, I was in there the other week, uh, and I see the need. Have you? How much is going to cost us? We have got three quotes for the floor once they finish the roof and the uh, fire suppression. Uh, the most the most quote was seventeen thousand, and the smallest quote was seventy five hundred, and we got one in there for twelve five. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, the twenty five the twenty. Uh, 18,000 18, quote was a quote sight unseen. The other two quotes that came in actually did look at the looked at the floor. 
purpose of what I'm asking is we're going to do the other work on the roof and we'll get that completed. Kind of like want to, I guess you guys coordinate getting it done so that when you finish the roof work, you have the floors finished shortly after that, getting on schedule so that you guys start having those activities over there. Commissioner Jones? You know, oh. uh, it rains from the outside, it rains from the inside. Yes. So it'll be It'll be a little harder to get to go ahead and start anything yeah. on the floor because it yeah. it it doesn't rain yes. a little bit. It rains a well, lot. I, I didn't say uh, started. Yeah, we coordinated so that right. So once they finish the roof, we'll have a schedule for them to come in at right at, right after. Yeah. Right. yeah. Once we uh once we get a timeline on when they're gonna finish the roof, uh we already gonna make a the, make a decision on who we're gonna go with and we're gonna try to get them started right after they finish the roof. Don't go with the eighteen thousand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to get three quotes, so I got my three quotes. Mission Bar. Appreciate the update. Thank you. So, so, so the roof, the roof, how much was the roof again? I'd have to revert back to the bid. Um, I believe it was 300 and something thousand dollars. Right. And, and so we're waiting on the department. Uh, the department of State. Correct. There to approve of the solicitation, the procurement, and the contract. Correct. Yes. Oh, that's okay. So we could not we could not do we could not use funding from another source until that get approved because we don't know if we use another contractor, they would meet those requirements. That's what I'm understanding. Well, correct. And the money that was allocated within that grant wouldn't be applicable anymore if we used external funding. That that money was specific within that grant for that item, much like the air conditioners. We were stuck with six air conditioners because that was specifically what was in the grant. Wow. So we're just being held up by the department. Right. State. Yes, sir. Okay. The big issue is us um, accessing the grant. If we go ahead and did the work now, we might not get the grant funding well, later. That's clear. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm clear on that. My my point was that we're held up by the department. Of yes. State. yes. Yes, sir. So is there any way that we maybe can make some additional calls to see if we can kind of help them help us uh, almost every day. We call yes. us. <laughs> Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Is there any further questions? Thank you. Update on the pension, Ms. Cotty? Or, oh, okay. I, I, I look like Ms. Jules. Okay. Okay. I, I didn't see it until she just stood up. Sorry. An administrator. Yep. Good evening. My name is Jill Kaiser. I'm the financial services supervisor and pension administrator. And I have two reasons for being here tonight. The first reason is because we have two uh, positions open on the pension board. We have a position open on the firefighters p pension board, and we have a position open on the police officers pension board. And the requirements are simply to be a resident of the city of Palaka. So we're, uh, we're anxious to get the positions filled. Um, it's a five member board. They, they meet every quarter, so it's four times a year. They meet during the day. Um, so it'd be a commitment during daylight hours, during working hours. Um, and you will get educated about the pension. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of good education there, and there's decisions that need to be made, which brings me to the second item on that I wanted to discuss, and that is an update on the fact that the three, each of the three um, pension boards uh, put out independent RFPs so that um, they can have a third-party administrator because I will be retiring in October. Um, they decided to go uh, to look at the RFP route. They, they had um, several respondents, but only one met all the criteria uh, for the RFP. Um, they had the um, respondent uh, come and discuss, present their uh, solution. And each of the, um, the boards met together at a luncheon meeting, and they decided to recommend to each of the boards to hire the, the third party administrator who met the RFP. Um, then each of the boards met independently and decided and voted to hire a third, that third party uh, administrator. Their name is the Resource Centers, and they will be um, during the next three months uh become the pension administrator for the for each of the pensions 
um, the cost to the uh, pensions is a cost to the pension and not to the city. The city is not going to be no longer contributing. The pensions will no longer be contributing toward um, a pension administrator. They're financing the pension administrator than themselves. Um, so the any of the costs that the pension has been paying to the city, uh, the only remaining one will be for liability coverage. And then they pay the city for that coverage. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions, Ms. Kaiser? I just have one question. What was the key factor uh, that they had that the other applicants did not have? What was the component? It was, um, the city can, clerk can speak to this, but they, um, responded after the closing of the RFP. So they weren't eligible as a respondent because they didn't meet the conditions. All other respondents other responded than, after. That's correct. I can confirm. There was only one that met the deadline. And it was proposed during the luncheon meeting whether the RFP should go back out or whether there should be accommodations. But um, the boards decided that if they couldn't meet the bolded red instructions, that perhaps they weren't the right candidate for the uh, handling million dollar pension funds. Any additional questions, Ms. Tiger? Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Bell? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, throughout the day, I typically get a number of phone calls uh, from residents who are passing through the community and see a property that um, was affected by fire, uh, burned structures or burned out and uh, the question is, uh, number one, are we aware of it? Why aren't we doing something about it? And what is code enforcement doing? And so as a result of that, I've looked into it and I am uh, constantly pressing and pushing staff to uh, accomplish several things. And I think it's important when they are able to accomplish it, that we recognize it. Ms. Krantz, if you could pull it up. So one of the requests that I had was that we post to the website um, a list of our structures that have been affected by fire so that our community could go to the website and see, okay, this is not a site that's new. This isn't something that uh, the city is not aware of. And so we know that the uh, code enforcement folks are aware of it and they're doing something about it. I simply asked for us to put up a list and I was pressing for us to put up a list but due to the ingenuity of uh, Mr. Cutright and the folks that he worked with, they went beyond just putting up a list of where the burn structures were. They actually put up, uh, were able to figure out how to put up a map. So now if you go to our website, um, you will see a link on the main page that will take you to this. And you can click on, um, and if you wouldn't mind demonstrating just one of those, uh, it will take you and let you know that that property has been identified and it will let you know if there's a case pending on that so that our citizens will be aware of that. In addition to that, I asked uh, uh, for our uh, code enforcement folks to be able to put up the several code enforcements that they're doing because I get calls about various issues and the question is whether or not we are aware of it again and whether or not we're doing anything about it again. And that is also something that they have pushed to our website. I won't ask Ms. Krantz to, to pull, it, pull it up now in the interest of time, but both of those pieces are now eligible, are now available on our website for our community see, to see. And so what we ask if you do see things that, that uh, are not on the website, please let us know. We'd like to take advantage of uh, the numerous members of our community being out there and about. We only have uh, three uh, people that are working in code enforcement now. So if we have a community that is working together with us to help identify things that we may not have known, we can see more, we can do more. And so uh, this is one step in that direction. 
Um, I also want to point out with regard to orange data, which is another uh, aspect that uh, we were able to get uh, pushed out to the website. Um, the city attorney was instrumental in making that happen. And that is a mapping of all of the vacant structures. So very similar to, to the same thing that I just mentioned. And again, I want to recognize staff when they figure out through ingenuity how to make these things happen that I've been pushing for. So thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. When you say vacant, do you mean city owned vacant properties or just no, vacant property? Just vacant property. Can we you have, add that element of city owned properties? It it, it is an oh, element sorry. of that. I yes. Identify. 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 Specifically. Mm -hmm. The city subjects itself to its own code. There are numerous city uh, properties that are currently have code violations on them, and they're not exempt from property registration. Right. But that, my question was, can we identify them? Of course. Yes. That's what so I'm that's clear, clearly identified as the city owned property. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so bringing that up, what? So bringing that up that we have, the city have uh, properties that are not in condition. What are we doing to bring our stuff up, ourself up? Because it's hard for us to hold our citizens accountable when we are not accountable for our own properties. That's a very good question. We are focused on making sure that we, like the city attorney said, that we are accountable to the same code requirements. And so once we identify them, we're working to find the funds in order to address the code violations on property that we own. I would be interested in having that list um, so that we are aware. Um, we may know of some, but sure. we may not be aware of everything. And I think that's something that mm -hmm should be at the forefront before we identify others. We need to identify ourselves. Yeah. Yep. Here I am. And I dress me. Thank you for that. Commissioners, uh, we actually are working on putting the sum together to show you the list of the properties that we have violations for the city properties, where they've started and where they're at now. Uh, Mr. Dale and his staff has made a wonderful uh, stride in getting some of the properties yeah. in condition. Some of the properties, as you know, are needing more attention than the others, but we have that presentation for you probably the next commission meeting. If not, you'll get it received it in the next couple of weeks in the email. Could you put it in an order of what you think is, I mean, all of it is yes. important. Just it'll like be prioritized. It'll be prioritized. And if I can get one alibi, I don't want to take all the credit. Mr. Peter, Peter Willer helped me with the map and everything. As a matter of fact, it was more of his intuitive and, and ideal of how to put the map. We just provided him with the information. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes, I but yeah i want to um first commend you guys for putting the website together uh and um also communicating out to the community as the status so with the status being as such um are there any like next steps as it relates to the status of it and then the next steps does it also include that that for the inf information, the ident the properties that you've identified as burn structures, you you got a picture up there. You got some uh, some content. Mm -hmm. Do you have what the what the next steps are? So we are pursuing the abatement process, uh, which includes identifying um, the code violations and then working through the process of trying to abate those uh, violations. Uh, when we have uh, burn structures or structures that are affected by fire um, that have code vi violations, obviously, we go through the process of trying to contact the owner, um, uh, notifying them of the violations that are associated with it. And those violations escalate and they continue. And so we work with them to try to figure out ways to remove those violations and get the property in compliance. If we run into a situation where with those structures, we have uh, exceeded uh, the value of the property or it's beyond the ability of the individual to make the repairs to bring it in compliance. And they're willing to engage in the sale of the property. That's something that we bring back to the commission as a consideration for an option to be able to uh, mitigate the situation and enter in upon the property ourselves and remove the uh, structure, remove the code violation. That was not the question that I oh, asked. I'm sorry. I, I asked specifically uh, what would be, I want like for the community, general community to know if there's a, if there's communication from the city 
what are the next steps? What's the next steps? Here's where we are. Here's the next steps. That's what I would like to okay. see. So in the uh, the piece of the other app on the on the on the website that he didn't show, it actually if you get the case number, mm -hmm. you click on that, it'll give you the case where is that now, and it'll give you the next step of where is that. Now, that's it, what we yeah. that's what we need. So to know. on the click on, if you go to that Dex website that we was talking about, you can either type in the property address, you can do the case number, or you can do the parcel number. You don't want those to bring that up, and then to give you a case file, it'll give you pictures and the violation that you see too. Thank you. That's what that's what in the in the last thing that I would like to request and uh thank um Commissioner uh, Commissioner uh, Campbell for bringing that up. But the um I would like to see that we kind of pause YouTube. on putting on any um code violations on other structures until we yes. get our house in order. So that would, I would like to ask the commission if we can get that supported because we should not be finding other people if we got properties that's out of uh, compliance. That so that would be my, my ask. That was actually something that I was going to uh, make the recommendation of. I don't, I'm not against the process of contacting them, but I think it's hard for us to put um, fees on others when we have outstanding stuff on ourselves. So that's kind of like, it's, it's not good practice. Clarification. So you're saying going forth, Right. Yes. Or, we, or let's so. hold off on any everything that's in the queue. We'll continue to work those. Okay. But no new, no new. Uh, uh, yeah. But we want to we want to make sure that priority wise we get the city uh, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Correct. I think and I'm trying. Means when it comes up, we have to really be willing to discuss how to pay for those issues or address, to address those issues, or whether again we should put our properties on the market that don't exactly. Well, it's a good idea. We, we do all, need to. I'm just saying we need to discuss all of those options. Go ahead, all, Commissioner Campbell. It also it almost sounds like this is something that should be workshop. So it's our sole focus uh, right. when we're coming in, identifying, knowing what we're looking at, and coming up with a plan of action. I know. When we get into our commission meetings, depending on the length of the agenda, sometimes, you know, depending, it, it can go hours. But I think this is something, especially um, if we can workshop it and possibly have community buy in as well with helping us formulate solutions to this. And I think okay. it's good that the precedence has been set to, it, you know, you all know what we expect yeah. for. So, good. are we saying we need to workshop what we need to do with our structure? Our structures. Once we receive the structures, the list of structures, like Madam Mayor stated, having a conversation as to if we want something, is it that we want to put it on the market, really kind of identifying what it is that we want to do. And it's something that I don't want just to be skipped over for sake of time. I want it to be a main focus so that we're able to move forward with something of substance um, so that we can properly execute, so that we can get back to the business of the city and making sure that others follow suit of us. Question. So uh, do we need to do something as it relates to a time certain to get those properties um, identified? I was thinking if we get the list by next commission meeting mm -hmm. and then have it as an agenda item for us to discuss and give direction of moving forward. Sonny yeah. is very good with giving us dates. I'd like to oh. expedite this so. as quickly as possible so that our code enforcement officers are moving in on additional new cases. They right. can keep doing their job right. so that Thank we don't involve the problem. Right. Thank you. Um, Any additional questions, comments? One last thing that I neglected to mention, our um, public works department is working on putting together work orders uh, so that uh, we have something similar for all the work orders that they have completed on a map so that you can see that. So um, I want to uh, note that they are actively working on that and uh, hopefully we'll have that as well. Commissioner Jones? Oh. Not on this subject. Up? If you want to finish on this subject. On that subject, yes. And um, in, 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 as it relates to that, uh, as for end-to-end -end customer service, mm -hmm. when most people put in their requests, they most people do not get any feedback. So what I would like to see that some form of when public work requests or any other request that there's feedback and that they can go into the website or whatever, get an email or something as it relates to the status of the request. And so if, if we can make that happen, 
that's what I think uh, would uh, help a number of our people from contacting the commission. I don't mind people contacting, mm -hmm. but we get way more calls than the people who are actually doing the job. So I would like for you and the staff to do be able to do your job. I don't want to get in get in the way of you guys doing the job. So uh, that will help us out greatly. And that very question was really the impetus for us moving in that direction. How do we create that accountability and that closing the loop with the residents so that they know an identified problem has actually been addressed and resolved? Thank you, Commissioner Jones. It was along the lines of getting calls. We got a lot of calls today. I know I did in reference to the trash pickup holiday schedule. We must find a better way to disseminate the information of when we're going to change the schedule. Um, today, Mr. Cartwright actually resolved the issue we had with some residents that just, they said they didn't know. Um, so mm -hmm. I just suggest we have a different way or additional ways to put it out there because the newspaper only come out three days, four days or three? Three. Three days a week. And so people may not get those notices. We must do a better job at doing that. And, and you know, it, 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 it's got to be something simple. And I know we did it. I know we put it out. But a lot of people call. And that's, I channeled the calls back up here, and they still call. So Understood. We got to do that. Commissioner Blum. Commissioner Campbell. Commissioner Campbell, sorry. Well, yeah, I I think um, that could be done in a in a couple of different ways. But um, when we have various forums and other things, there are information that the um, public information officer has done a really good job with trying to get that information out um, in terms of whenever there's a schedule change as it relates to pickups. Uh, I know I've seen some things that Sonny has sent out as well as the PO. So, but if we need to find other ways to do it in addition to the website. Um, well, we, we would like to also have the, the residents who hit hit the website too as well. So most people uh, in this day and age have um, technology, some form of technology to be able to utilize the web. Everybody does not use it. So again, we just need to figure out a way how we can get the word out faster. Thanks. Thank you for bringing it up, Commissioner Jim. Campbell. I think it kind of goes back to even in the workshop yesterday, we were trying to identify a list of um, items or a list of platforms that we could utilize to make sure that we disseminate the information um, as possible. And one of the ways, again, I'm going to ring the bell, um, is maybe we want to look at the school board and see if there is a system that we would be able to utilize or joint force to get certain information out to our citizens um, I know we again we've used them in the past, but they we might want to look at the hardware or the platforms that they use to see if it's something that we could possibly implement. They get stuff out at the drop of a dime. It goes out via a call. It goes out via a text message, and it goes out via an email. Right. Um, and so that may be something that we want to look at to see if it's something that's feasible for the city as a whole. Very good. Any, yes. Anybody else? No. Okay, thank you. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner. And speaking um, on school board, we would like to recognize school board chair, Ms. Sandra Gilliard, in oh, yes. the audience. Oh. Thank and you. Ms. Gilliard. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. I'm going to open up the floor to public comment. This is general, non agenda items for public comment, limited to three minutes. Please give me your name and address for the record. You will not necessarily receive any action on this item. And please be respectful of everybody. Mr. Vickers, ask you. We're asking you, Vickers. I reversed your name. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Ask you, Vickers. I know. 207 North 18th Street, Palacca, Florida. 32177. Phone number 386 328 8691. The date of birth is not going to be. I'm here for two things. One, the last meeting, I said something 
and I want to correct it, to the chief of police and the ones that are here, that the police officer had priors. I found out later after reaching out to the person who gave me the information that was not true. He did not have priors. I may end up coming and meet, admit when I did something I did not know I gave the wrong information. Now the next thing, <clears throat> I applaud you all for what you're doing as far as clean up your house before you ask me to clean up my house. Code enforcement is necessary, but you can't give me a fine and a date to do something and your property is adjacent to mine and worse shape than mine. Your property should be in shape first before you tell me to clean my house your house should be clean. The next thing is that Robert's rule of order. Is this a law or is this a, a, a opinion? I, I know I'm not going to answer right now for it, but it's thing of it. I uh, checked that the other day and found out it's not what I thought it was. Because when you open a meeting, you're actually using what you say as an opinion, how it should be ran. We go to paste that. The next thing I want to bring up is that we have spent a lot of money on purchasing property and not using it properly. You got a bridge under the bridge that's supposed to be for one thing. It's not. It's for the homeless people. You spent three million dollars for the high rise and sold it for less than a million dollars. You got people that places that I don't know who get benefits from these things, but they're separate and wrong. We are the second poorest county in the state of Florida. We didn't rise up. Somebody came up and fell down below us. Now we're second Porch County in the state of Florida. What are we doing to try to raise ourselves up and get ourselves up, up above this? At one time, Putnam County was the most thriving business in the state of Florida and almost in the nation. That was back uh, in, I think, 1780 or something like that. No, 80, something like that. Anyway, the, it was a, based on the wood sales. It was going everywhere. We fell from grace to waste. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vickers. Is there anybody else here for general public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Commission and staff response, if any. I do. Go ahead, Ms. Commissioner. I, I wasn't here the last time when um, that that was brought up by Mr. Vickers regarding the incident that took place, but I do have some questions if that's okay. I want to ask the chief first because I heard about the incident initial, initially from the city manager and he informed me about what happened and, and, and told me that he would in, let us, let me know when we would hear more about the case. So I was under uh, the impression that he had not received the report and was waiting to hear an update. In the meantime, citizens were calling, asking about the incident and felt that it was being swept under the rug. So I was kind of appalled that the city manager had already received the report, but had not given us an update on it. And I'm wondering if it wouldn't have brought, been brought up in the last meeting, will we still be waiting for the response? So Chief, I want just a little timeline of when the accident happened and when you provided the report to the city, man city manager. Yes, ma'am. Um, forgive me if I'm a little bit off. Uh, I know I don't look it, but I'm aged a little bit. Just My memory is slow. Uh, I will say the incident occurred uh, on the night of, I believe it's February 21st, uh, around midnight or just after midnight. Um, at that time, um, the officer was put on administrative leave. He was notified when he was um, at the jail. Uh, we immediately started the IA and the IA was completed um, just prior to the 5th of March because we brought the officer in on the 5th of March to notify him of what the recommendation would be to uh, the city manager in, in regards to termination. Uh, understanding that- In regards to what? Termination. So, and you said, what about you informed that, you informed the city manager that on March 5th? 
No, that's what we inform the officer because we have to provide that information to the officer. Okay. Now, um, I'm not exactly positive if it was the 6th or the 7th because we did have a meeting that morning and on both days. And it was one of the mornings right before the meeting that I provided the report to both HR and the city manager as of the finding as a result of where we were with the IA and the uh, resignation of the office. So you provided, you provided a report to HR and the city manager? Yes, ma'am. Okay. For us, it was complete at that time. So at that time, once it's complete and it's final, we turn it over to um, both the city manager as well for his review and HR for records. And what was the date of our last meeting? I can't recall. 14th. 14. 14. So you were, the, the, so thank you so much. So to the city manager, you were made aware when? I, I received the report, uh, I believe two days before the meeting. It would have been the 12th, I believe. Um, yes, because the meeting was on the 14th. So it was two days before the meeting. So I, although you received the report and you didn't have time to read it, which you said in the meeting, right? You hadn't had time. Well, did you, did you know that that individual was no longer with the force, with the organization prior to reading the investigative report? No, I did not. It is included in the investigative report that the individual resigned, but it, I did not know that until I read the report. And as, and as of the last meeting, you hadn't read the report yet. So in, other, in essence, you found out about the employee the same time we did when the question was asked. It was about the same time. Um, however, there's some uh, specific aspects of how you deal with, and I'm sure you're aware of this, uh, an employee and the information that you provide uh, regarding a staff member or an employee, which is uh, creates a, a level of sensitivity um, that has to be addressed and dealt with. And that's why I didn't feel comfortable moving forward with making any statements until I was absolutely sure that we were within our rights and did not expose the city to any additional liability. So is it safe to say you didn't feel comfortable, comfortable to at least let us know as commissioners that that person was no longer with the organization, although you didn't have to provide us details that were in the report? I did not feel that uh, at the time that the, the gentleman came forward and uh, made his comments to the commission that that was the appropriate time to inform uh, commissioners. Did you consult with counsel and did you give us any further updates I to did. let us know? Did you consult with counsel whether or not you can inform us where we were with the status? We didn't need the details, but the status of the, the fact that the individual was no longer with the organization. I did not consult with our city attorney, no. Thank you. Any further questions on that? No, because I I know we got that uh, initial uh, text um, from February 21st, and I did not hear anything further until I sent an email um, to Mr. Bell on March 12th, uh, asking the status Correct. of that, because again, that's when I had heard things um, from the community uh, and not hearing it from uh, the city manager. And so that's what I have an issue with. So that's, I mean, I'm just, just looking at the timeline from the 21st when we initially got that. I, I applaud him for communicating that piece, but from that point, it went dead. And the next uh, communication I heard regarding that matter uh, came from uh, the community. And uh, that's when I sent an email on the 12th and um, Mr. Bell communicated that he was reviewing something that had already been um, Final, so the termination or well, the resignation was already done. So I just have a problem, and that's why when I asked the question in the last meeting, um, why are you? What would you want to review? Why would you want to review something that's already final? And I don't think you want to bring something back up as a, a resignation, but maybe a termination. Maybe yes, but mm -hmm. a resignation. There's no 
further uh, action need to be taken. So that's what's, what's I was telling you. If this is appropriate, moving forward, is there anything that we can do as your commissioners to help you get out information such as that more expeditiously so that this doesn't happen again? No, I, I appreciate that, Commissioner. And um, like I said, some of the difficulty is when we're dealing with personnel. So I, I want to make sure that I move um, expeditiously, but at the same time that I don't expose the community to, I mean, the city to additional liability. And so um, in terms of things that, that might be done uh, in order to help that process, only thing that I could say is that um, making sure that we have that uh, mechanism for communication established and open um, so that uh, when I do get the resolution, I can go ahead and shoot that out there. But I uh, realize that there are aspects that people on Facebook might be able to talk about and speak about that don't have uh, the potential of liability or legal ramifications that I uh, cannot uh, as a city manager. There are things with regard to staff and employees that are a little bit um, sensitive. And so that's what I'm aware of. But I will move more expeditiously on getting that. And hopefully we don't have uh, issues related to that. And I think I tried to address that most recently with the uh, matter that came up the other day um, so that you get that information much more quickly. In the future. Okay. Okay. Two things. I'm sorry. And I don't want to prolong it. However, you have counsel here in house mm -hmm. that you can consult with. And you had the chief, you have the chief that you can consult with. Mm -hmm. If you have questions about information that you can at least let us know so that we can inform the community. Michael Ray. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Another thing, you just brought up the issue about something that just recently happened and you informed us about it. Okay. And it was a change in communication. Normal, normally we get texts. However, I understand that an email went out last hour before our meeting. When did you decide that you were going to change your type of communication and informing us about things? I think that's important for us to know, you know, changing things without consulting with us or letting us know so we'll be aware and not hearing these things from the community or from others. When normally we should hear them from you. And, and that's a very, very good question. Uh, I did switch to using a uh, email process. Uh, rather than a text message process, it's really the discretion of the uh, of the commission. If you would prefer to have it one way or the other, please let me know. Uh, I can do both, um, but it's really at the discretion of the commission how you want to uh, receive the message or the best uh, mechanism for the way you would want to receive it. It would be nice if you asked us prior to making those moves. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Campbell. Just on this. And, and, and basically, you know, the timeline for that uh, that initial communication basically was 19 days. So that's really not acceptable from um, and, and the only reason I got the communication back was because I initiated that after the after, um, just prior to the meeting, two days before the meeting. So uh, that's just kind of what we need to do going forward. Mm -hmm. Time to communication. And and again, I, not to prolong this further, but there seemed to be a discrepancy. Chief Shaw said he got the report to you March 6th or 7th, and then you said you didn't get it until when? Two days before the council, uh, the commission meeting. So thank you for bringing that up. There's a discrepancy, yeah. and that, yeah. that's bothersome to me. I would, I like accuracy. And I would like some clarification. I mean, I know that we always, we talk about the sake of time, but I want clarification. <laughs> I'm sorry, Commissioner Bourne. I'm mean, sure. Commissioner Campbell. What are you sorry for? But, uh, oh, I thought maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. okay, let's go. Go ahead. I would like clarification now because there are some discrepancies in the story as the communication process, and I want that addressed tonight so that the community can know and we can move forward with transparency in this organization. Commissioner Campbell? I think, and I, and I wasn't going to say anything, I think there is a miscommunication with regards to the timeline for the commission versus the timeline for the community. The timeline for the community was immediate. I saw it when I woke up that morning on Facebook. 
I had that was the night after it happened. However, the communication I, and I want to be clear, we're providing answers to us as a commission or are we looking to provide information to the citizens, which I feel like that process should be a little bit different than the process of us receiving the information. Now, if that's what we want to talk about, I think that's the angle of what we should come from, because I think we're trying to mix the two together. And it's kind of the conversation is being just it's, it's, it's going everywhere, because if we want to talk about communication, yeah, we should be able to receive communication before the community, because we know the community is going to be put. It was put out there almost immediately. But again, I think from I'm trying to get your perspective. Are you talking about communication to us directly as commissioners? We were informed directly, which is good. Thank you for informing us. However, we were put on hold with the status of the situation. I I didn't we I'm not I know that there are particulars that we can't know about but if you knew that the it, informing us so that the community can know and there's no miscommunication informing us of certain statuses so that we are aware of what's going on and I think it's important for us to know because because the citizens are going to call us they are going to see us, hold us accountable, and we Absolutely. need to be able to provide those answers to them. Understood. So withholding that information, I don't think it's good. So I think it's pertinent that you let us know okay. things when they happen so that we can, you know, be able to inform the community, properly inform the community. Thank you, Commissioner Boyd. Yeah, just one last, this is just the last question uh, regarding this, because I'm, I want to, I mean, when we when we talked about when they, when they did die and the chief brought them in for... Uh, the termination, but the officer chose to exactly. move to resignation. Now, who's all involved in that? I thought the city manager normally is involved with. Uh, is they are involved with that portion of the, or no? Or how or how soon do, does he get a notice? So no, sir. Uh, in conclusion of the IA, we notify the officer in conclusion of the IA that the IA is closed and what the findings are and what the if it leads to disciplinary action to where uh, up to termination. Termination is only made just like the per permission to hire or fire is done by the city manager. So we inform the, the person or the individual at that time what the recommendation will be and that we will be moving forward. Um, and that's when we include and bring the city manager into as well as HR into um, the timeline. I, I really want us to be mindful of our position here versus day-to-day -day operation. And maybe we need to have it clear. And I, I'm almost, I wouldn't want to put um, Attorney West on the platform tonight, but I would like you to research that for us and see how much um, of what information we can be provided without us tipping from our position as commissioner to legislators versus dibbling and dabbing in the day-to-day -day operation. Um, while there are things that I feel are pertinent that we should know, however, we have somebody who we hired um, to facilitate the day-to-day -day operations. Um, so again, I want to make sure that we as legislators are acting within our scope of work and allowing the city manager to do what it is that he has to do. Um, so again, we know that sometimes we look back and we go based off what others have done. Um, and what others have done may not always have been the proper way that things should be done. But again, so that we cover ourselves, we wanna make sure that we're operating as legislators and not as city managers. Commissioner Boyer. Okay, yes, um, so, and um, each of the commissioners have a, a duty um, to understand now if if communication comes to me in the form of when it came and 19 days pass and I have not heard anything else and of the nature that it was and I'm sitting and waiting uh, I don't think that's um, proper so I don't think it's digging into day-to-day -day operations 
to follow up and check on the status. So going forward, if I if I if there's a, a another incident that happens and the city manager reaches out to me and let me know the status of what has happened in the city, and if there's another pause, I'm going to reach out again. I don't think I'm doing it on a daily basis. I think 19 days is quite a long time. So I had to reach out to ask what was the status. And in fact, it was done way back on the 6th that the incident was closed out. So there's a big gap in there between the time that it was closed out and the time that I asked. So I'm not going to sit and wait on anything. I'm going to represent this community. Commissioner McCaskill? I think you brought up a very valid point, and that's why I wanted to uh, remind him that just please, if you have any questions, consult with staff that we have on hand for those purposes. Absolutely. And so that's thankful. what I want to make sure that as we move forth in this conversation, that there is clarity. No one said that you could not follow up and ask questions. However, as a legislator versus a city manager who employs, who handles day to day, I want us to make sure that we have an understanding of what information we are privy to or the process. So that's why I want to make sure as we go forth as a unified body that we move forth with clear direction so that we know what's expected of us and the city manager knows what's expected from us to us. Again, I did not ask for any specifics. Commissioner Bourne, we not. I'm just, just I'm not letting them. Okay, no, no. I didn't ask for any specifics. I asked for the status. That's all I asked for. And again, that's not, that's not, uh, that's part of what the communication piece was. So that's where I'm at. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. I think I could sum it up by saying we are the legislators here and we can actually go forth by saying, a critical incident happened, we want to be informed by so many days, and that could kill that. Um, and, and therefore, we have set the policy, not the practice. The practice is what you guys, I, I think that we are accustomed to, but what policy are we following? So we'll set a policy. Could we agree on that? Yeah. Of when we want to be notified after a critical incident. And chief will know, the city manager will know, and we'll know what to expect. And that I think that'll take care of it. That's just a suggestion, and I would like to for the board to like to maybe think about that so we could bring it forth okay. and ratify that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? But not with this particular issue. Okay. Um, I want to address what uh, Mr. Vickers stated, Mary West. You, I said it again. <laughs> <laughs> Attorney West, I would like you to bring back before us the while we move forth with the um as a recommendation the robert's rules of order um it doesn't have to be a long drawn out probably a three minute presentation as to why it's so important he did bring up um it we use it as a recommendation it's not something necessarily that has to be followed but i think it would be advantageous for us and the citizens to know why we utilize the robert's rules of order sure um it, it's because it's in our code i understand that but Oh, yeah. You don't have to adhere to Robert's rules of order, except for the fact that it is in, in your code. So if you wanted to change that, uh, you could do so by um, instructing staff to draft an ordinance, provide some guidance and, and vote on that. But as it stands right now, Robert's rules of order is the parliamentary procedure that is codified in your code. I'm fine with that. I just wanted to make sure that it was out there for his addressing. Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda. Are there any items that anybody wants pulled from the consent agenda? Commissioner Campbell? No, ma'am. I make a motion that we accept the consent agenda. Second. Y'all got to move quick. Wow. Wow. <laughs> motion and a second. Uh, oh, second. We, we have he seconded. He seconded. Uh, he seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposition? Thank you. Yay. Wow. On to regular business. Discussion direction request from Animal Rescue Consortium, AHC, for funding for low-cost spay neuter capability. Hi. Yes. 
please give us your name and address. And My legal name is Virginia Delgado Oakwood. I go by Jeannie Oakwood, 1952 South Highway 17 in Crescent City, 32112. I am so honored to have this opportunity to, to talk about space. Yeah, please, microphone technique. I'm sorry, what? Would you educate the speaker on microphone technique, please, or allow me to? Okay. When you're talking into the microphone, please do not touch the microphone. Okay. Please pull it back from you and make sure you're at least one foot away from the microphone. Oops. That's a very hot mic. It can actually pick up that front row behind you. Okay. Is that good? <laughs> Thank you very much. I apologize for that. So we're here this evening. And we're honored to uh, able to present this information. Uh, ARC Animal Rescue Headquarters is at Crescent City K Kennel. I am the president of ARC Animal Rescue. We provide adoption, um, spay and neuter vouchers, low cost. Thank you. I have a loud voice. Okay. Low cost vaccine clinics. As well as emergency veterinary um, services for individuals who cannot pay for veterinary care. As you can hear from the newspaper recently about the older lady that had 209 dogs, you understand the urgency of having a spay and neuter in house in this county program. Uh, we are very close to get a grant from USDA to purchase a spay and neuter um, trailer that we can mobily um, go around the entire county and provide low cost uh, spay and neuters. The average cat, if you go to a veterinarian is 150 to 200 and a dog, depending on the size uh, of, of Yorkie versus a Great Dane, it could go up to $450. Um, our co-pays for spay and neuter are an average between 40 and 50. And our, if, of course, when they have surgery, they must be current on their vaccinations. We have a low cost, like I mentioned, a rabies is only $10. We got a grant for distempers and FVRCPs for cats for free. So we have really provided a lot of needed animal care welfare in this community. Our proposal is to uh, for us to get this grant. Unfortunately, they only provide a 75%. Uh, we um, are asking the community and uh, cities to help us with that buffer of 25%. Um, one last statistic, we did um, 570 vaccines last year. Uh, we do an average now of three per uh, month. And our next one is this Saturday at Interlochen because we're going out there as well. And those appointments are completely full. We have veterinary uh, already in place. We are talking to the University of Miami uh, Veterinary Medicine School to provide us with more veterinary care. And on my list of goals for ARC is uh, I could be here to midnight. Um, uh, Miss Diane is going to is our grant um, writer. She volunteers her time, and we're very thankful for her. I know that she has emailed you the po the power presentation, and she would like to have the opportunity to um, give you most of the highlights in the um, in the uh, presentation. And then, of course, if you have any uh, questions uh, or comments, uh, we'll be glad to answer those this evening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Diane Kelly. I live in Crescent City, 123 Lakeside Lane, Crescent City, Florida. And as Ginny mentioned, I just do the volunteer grant writing for ARC. And I did want to ask, first of all, do we have the presentation or would anybody like a hard copy of our presentation? Don't, Don't have it online. Would you like a hard copy? Um, sure. Okay. You want it, and I'm not going to go through the details. It is not a very, oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the details of the presentation, uh, but it is not very long. So hopefully for reading pleasure will be helpful. 
<clears throat> now, many folks I know in this room are animal lovers, not just in the audience, but certainly with the commission and certainly the mayor. Um, in Putnam County, Putnam County is, as we all know, very recessed and uh, animal care is as well. There are a lot of animals suffering in our county. There are a lot of people suffering because they can't take care of their animals. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share some highlights with you. You may think that much of this is intuitive because many of us already know so much about animals in our community, but there are some facts that I thought would be helpful to share so that we really do have a little bit more granular picture of what the landscape is right here, not only Palatka, but the rest of Putnam County. And uh, the highlights, oh, thank you, Jenny. A uh, few highlights. One is, and we did, by the way, do a lot of research regarding not only the demographics of our county, but also um, animal welfare, many studies that were done, data on animals in our county, and just data on animals overall and their care, uh, particularly with the more recessed or the poor communities. So a few highlights, uh, right now in Putnam County, there are about 23, or excuse me, 21,000 plus households who house about 32,000 dogs and cats. And that's what we're focusing on, dogs and cats today, of which at least 6,000 owned animals, owned dogs and cats are not spayed or neutered. And you may think, well, what's 6,000? That's not a whole lot, but 6,000 not cared for appropriately can cause a lot of challenges, not only for the lifestyle of the animal itself because their life is typically shortened, but also for the community and certainly their ability to uh, procreate. And this does not exclude the feral animals. And I'll touch on a few highlights there as well. In our county right now, about 22% of dogs, so almost one in four dogs do not see a vet every year. And about 36% of cats don't. And um, almost 40% of the reason when folks were surveyed, the reason given is because they just cannot afford it. And so if they cannot afford to provide the basic care for their animals, many of them are not getting spayed and neutered as they should be. And nationally, about 76% of family dogs and 85% of family cats are spayed or neutered. Putnam County is much lower than that. Also, right now, if you look at spayflorida.com, which is a website that does house a lot of data regarding low-cost spay and neuter facilities in the state of Florida, you'll find that Putnam County does not have any. We do not have an ongoing, steady, dependable, low-cost spay neuter capability. Every now and then we may get grants for vouchers. You may see that with other organizations, but we need a capability. Just like Jacksonville has First Coast Normal Homeless Pets and other counties have other capabilities as well. About 30% of the counties in Florida do not have this kind of capability. We are one of them. And all the counties that surround us do have a capability with the exception of Bradford. So Putnam County has a lot of work to do to get a spay and neuter capability off the ground. And what, what data has shown, not just with Jacksonville and First Coast Normal Homeless Pets, but when you do introduce a low cost, steady, low cost spay and neuter capability, it sharply reduces, it takes about a year to do it, to demonstrate the data. It does sharply reduce the intake of animals to county, uh, like Putnam County Animal Control will benefit. Other humane societies will benefit, et cetera, and euthanasia will go down. And you probably have heard a lot of horror stories and challenges that Putnam County Animal Control is dealing with now. They cannot take in the animals, the demand that's coming to them. And that's why we have situations, unfortunately, where we see dogs attacking people, dogs attacking someone else, feral cats all over the place, uh, people's birds are getting killed. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So Putnam County has a great deficit that really has to be addressed and it's not getting any better, it's getting worse. In seven years, and these are just stats, and this is by Florida Animal Friend, and they're a large organization that has tremendous data regarding Florida animal statistics. When you look at one altered, one on, excuse me, one all, unaltered female dog and her offspring, so one female dog and her puppies, through the six plus years of fertility, they have the physical ability to produce, and you probably won't hardly believe it, but it is true, 67,000 puppies. Now they don't produce that many puppies, but they have the physical ability to do that. When you look at a female cat and her litter, 
through their lifetime, they can they have the ability to produce 370,000 cats. That's insane. I looked at the numbers and I thought there's got to be an extra digit or two in there, and there was not. Now you'll probably think, well, yeah, right, Diane, you're on drugs, but that well, I might be, but that's not what we're talking about today. But 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 that aside, there was another study done of 2,000 cats, feral cats, um, in the nation. It was 2,000 looking at them over a period of many years. And, it, and we have a lot of feral cats, not just in Palaka, we have them all over the place. But one feral cat on average, when you look at what they produce, you know, because they're typically not as healthy as other cats, home cats, but they only produce less than two litters average per year, 75% of those cat, those kittens don't survive. The mother might get killed or if they're, uh, they're predators are around, a hawk may get them. So there's a lot of suffering too. There's a lot of suffering, but still there's going to be a lot of other animals that they're going to produce. Um, in fact, one typical feral cat based on that study in just the first year or year from that cat and her offspring produces about 29 live animals that survive all of the terrors and the challenges that they may face. So it's a horrible situation, and we don't always see what all the suffering is behind the scenes. I'm so sorry. Okay. All right. So I'll just share in the presentation, we do address a little bit later on what we're attempting to get funding for. We do not yet have the grant approved from USDA, but uh, we believe it looks very positive. And if it's not USDA, it'll be another organization, whether it's going to be PetSmart or another. But the point is we're very close to, we believe, securing the grant. We have a 25%. What's that? It's going to be in this category. It's on the agenda. Okay, what? I didn't hear. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. You want close, close? Yeah. What we're asking. Close, well, close. I didn't have my mic on, so that's my fault. But we need to close up. We get, I got you. allocate five minutes and finish. I'm so sorry. Okay. That's okay. Here's what we're asking for we are asking for this organization, this commission, to provide a commitment, not to write a check yet, but to provide a commitment contingent upon our securing the grant. We would like funding for between five and 7,000 to help contribute to the gap that would not be funded by the grant tour because Thank Palaka you. is a great beneficiary of this capability. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Denson, we're going to now have a presentation, um, discussion, ja request rather Jacksonville Black Chamber of Commerce for building space. So good evening, I'm Shannon Denson, the current president of Jacksonville Black Chamber of Commerce. I come before you just ask a simple request to join forces, of course, with the regular Chamber of Commerce in Palapa. We're asking to have a building that may be not utilized that we can use to come to Palapa to maybe offer resources in the urban community, prefer the building to be in the urban community because that's our heartbeat and our voice. And so the reason why I think is because we want to be that bright voice for Palapa business. We also would like to brain health and wellness, because we know that's important as well. We are coming to Palaka April 1st, so to kick off our initiative for health and wellness. So I don't have anything other than to ask for that building, if you have it, an underutilized building that the chamber can have. We do have a 501c3 and a community tax credit that we can offer to you as well as an offset. Thank you. Anything. And then just to clarify, we did meet with Ms. Jones um, with the Putnam County Chamber, and they don't have any room for any further occupancy. So thus it came to this. Who met with Ms. Jones? I, I, it was myself. Yes. I'm sorry, Ms. Denson contacted me. I did. And we met with Ms. Jones. And she just wanted, they wanted to introduce themselves and wanted to um, discuss possibility of coming to this community and that's why it's coming to the board at large. No promises were made. It was just a discussion as yeah. a, I, and an introduction to the chamber. Go ahead, Commissioner Jones. Go ahead. As, as a discussion, Mayor, um, I know we contribute to the chamber, which is for all, mm -hmm. all Putnam County residents. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a city owned build, building, isn't it? No. Is that no. the chamber? Who said no? It's not. Miss Jones can come up and clarify if you want further clarification. Yeah, I would. I mean, I would need more of what we're going to substance do. to say what is it if we're giving or if there is a building, what would it be utilized for? 
of course you came just to ask for that, but there's nothing that you say what will be transpiring out of the business outside of health and wellness. That that that's so True. broad. True. That, I mean, and that may not be able to be answered now. True. Um, and I know I'm not comfortable saying yes to a request and we don't have full oh, logistics as to what so I, I do have a presentation. So I was only allotted five minutes. So I can email you guys our outline because I do have an outline of what I'd like to see, I think, for Palaka and what we're trying to do to help you make a better decision of what we would like to bring to Palaka on the scale of an urban core. So I do respect that because I don't have anything other than my course request for a building. But rest assured, I do have a plan I can email to you guys to make a, a better decision of what we're trying to bring to the table. So, thank you, Ms. Jones. Do you want to, uh, the building itself, the chamber building? Certainly, the building itself is owned by the chamber. We rent the land from the right. city on the ninety-nine-year lease. Oh, okay, so I, yeah, that's what my yeah. The city property is certainly what we sit on. All right, <laughs> so we own the building. So, so with that being said, uh, <clears throat> do you see any opportunities where you can partner with the? The chamber that's coming to oh Black absolutely we had a great discussion um we both have similar missions you know our mission is to create community wealth through job attraction retention profitable tourism and to help our businesses grow and prosper their mission and correct me if i'm wrong but it's been a while it's been a couple months mm -hmm. is directly related to assisting minority businesses grow and prosper and aligning resources for them so well, in that together, we want to be a part yeah, and yeah. helpful to all businesses. It's definitely needed. All uh, businesses. But, you know, I was just saying if there's, if if we couldn't find a place right now, would there be help for them to partner with you guys uh, in some way? The mayor just advised that you guys have already met, but i um, quite sure we could find something. It may not be as free 99, but... Uh, at a cost, <laughs> it'll be a cost. So, but we definitely would like to have you guys. Absolutely, um, that's yeah. my take on it. And it was an introductory meeting, and a lot more conversations to happen down the road. Much like I think their purpose tonight is to meet y'all. Yeah, and I would like to see. I would like for you guys to present. Okay. So uh, I would like for you to get on the agenda and, and present. I would like to see the presentation, but I would also like the board to be taken in consideration to formulate a Palaka Black Chamber of Commerce. Yes. That's um, and That's I think one of the things that it's good to have outside come in and benefit from locals, but we want to make sure that there's something sustainability that's here that could possibly be a branch up under the Chamber of Commerce that would possibly benefit um, or partnership with the Jacksonville Black Chamber of Commerce if it was to mm -hmm. ever come to fruition. But um, again, I'm all for outside help. But again, we got to make sure that we help our own. Okay, thank you. Let me, let me, let me say this: I'm 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 not all outside. I'm a I'm a I'm originally from Hastings and traveled to and from from Palaka from childhood to manhood, and moved to Jacksonville. So I'm kind of. Well, uh, the, the reason I say that is a lot of times when we speak to citizens, or citizens are a little bit apprehensive mm -hmm. of. Um, moving forth with outsiders, because what it, when I say outsiders, don't take that out of context. But when we talk about moving forward, a lot of people come in, they provide sources, and then they're snatched away. We want something that has that is consistent. We want something that our citizens know if we introduce them to it, that we it's going to be something long term. We don't want anyone to come in, reach the benefits, and go back to their respective communities and it be that we want to make sure that if it's coming to us, that it's something that's sustainable and it's something that's going to be for years to come. And and that that is exactly what our intentions are. And, and for and foremost is to be able to engage with the residents and the business owners here in, in Palaka that it that they will be the ones that are actually managing the chamber uh in the process of things that's going on. So it's nothing that we want to take away. Uh, from Palaka is what we want to bring to Palaka and our resources to Palaka in the surrounding area. Okay, okay that'd be fine. We we'll love that. And and that be a part of the presentation. If, if I can't make it to Jacksonville, just like you said, I want to see the meat and potatoes of what you all do and what's behind it. 
Okay. So is this an extension of what you currently have in Jacksonville that you would like to bring here? Yeah, it is. Because when we were talking, we realized that we want to do grassroots. So the community is is it. So the voice of the community is definitely important. To, like you say, with any community, you have to get the buy-in. I don't care where you are. You have to get the buy-in from that community. In order for that to work, you have to have boots on the ground, old-fashioned grassroots, to be able to talk about what's offered, what's needed, how can bring value and just making sure that it's not just the chamber, it's the community to the, to the, to grow, right? And participate and be productive citizens. And I'm talking about a specific population. I'm talking about urban core. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. We look forward to a full presentation or getting your information yeah. emailed to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Madam Mayor. Yes, go, Mr. Bell. Did you have any, uh, did the commission have any direction or discussion on the consortium, on that previous item, the consortium's uh, presentation? Yeah. There, there's not a present. We, we would like to see, we would like to engage in. The, no, I the, think he's talking he's about the talking about the, uh, the first presentation we had. Because it was on the agenda for discussion and direction. I find it hard to make a commitment to funding um, and we were, yeah, I just. Okay. I just wanted to make sure for it, staff did, purposes. Did she that, only come to us? Was it not a request for the county as well? I, I think they've been to the county, but they she couldn't answer that. Uh, could one of you please come up quickly? I think the county, the county is re responsible for, you know, all of animal control. The city assists in that process. Now we do have, we had $40,000 uh in a uh for a position to do animal control but not specifically for a particular right. program so Correct. and i do know that the the county is already uh, working on trying to um i guess construct the building for those animals that, that's that's something totally different okay so we, yeah. we are looking for funding to um implement a spay and neuter program in this county okay the commissioners BOCC have committed to a $25,000 um, support. Okay. Uh, Pomola Park has also committed to 5,000. Wallaca, we're waiting to hear next month, their commitment and interlocking, we, we haven't done the presentation there. So okay. like Ms. Diane says, this is not writing a check right now. We just need commitment okay. of at least between five and 7,000 so we can implement spay and neuter in this county that does not exist. We do not have a humane society. We only have animal control. Now, can I ask for clarity? You for can the, ask, go ahead. The five to 7,000, is it from this entity or just in general? From the city of Palaka. I just wanted to make sure that. Okay, is there any further questions? I think with that said, we may take a brief recess now and well, we, for what? Because it was a we request? Need, we need to make a ruling on this because there's something that we did not do, correct? Well, we can, we can so, give direction. I think right. we're looking to give direction. Yeah. And I'm not it's sure just that a request for direction. Do that. That's okay. what so, I, think I, I would like to say the, the, the funding coming up. Is that what we did? I just don't. I, I mean, I don't want to commit to something and so at this time, we're taking no action on it. I have a question, though. Go ahead. The, the question would be, how much funding do you need to actually start implementing the program? Because if we if we give funding now and you're not ready to implement your program, then we just have funds that's committed that's just not being utilized. On the back page. Okay. So we just get those. the funded proposals on the back page what yes. you're asking for. Thank you. Three. And we just, um, yeah, just so I, I think that was why uh, maybe I'm wrong, but and Commissioner Campbell can correct yeah. me, but I think that's why we're not ready to make a commitment yet. I think we have right. to discuss it further. And if we think we are going to go forward, what funding we would use. So I think right. the whole discussion that needs to go on with that. So can I make a motion to just uh post postpone to the next meeting? You would like it to add it to the next agenda for discussion? Correct. So that we can have time to Thank review you. and make a good conscious effort decision. 
Would happen. you also let us? Would you also let us know if there's any additional information you need us to bring back? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And let, just really minor comment. Uh, BOCC Putnam County, they were uh, committing to twenty five thousand with the understanding that we would should be able to get or would be able to get support from the municipalities. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank I you. hope that helps a little bit. Have a good evening and thank you. Have just, any question? Not more so a question. I would just. There's but there's discussion of. Have been second. You got a second okay. before you have the I mean, motion. Okay. Motion for the sake of second. All in favor of having uh, this motion, motion for the second for the sake of discussion. Yes. Go ahead. Discussion. Discussion. Thank you. I would be interested in seeing what the commitments of the other municipalities would be um, as we go forth, because I see the um, the the project amount, but what happens if you supersede? Um, and we commit what we can make. I, I want to see it happen, but again, I don't want to put us in and we could have said one thing or I just don't want to cap us in at 5,000 to 7,000 when we could have did something different um, and still accomplish the same goal. Gotcha. And just, and we'll put this in writing for you, no, but just so, so you, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. And that was my discussion. Gotcha. Okay. In, in two, are you asking like maybe for, when, when when most people ask for budgets for programs, mm -hmm. normally you'll have your items laid out as to how much your budget is and what each uh, amount line item goes for. Uh, okay. Could you do something along sure. the line? Absolutely. Thank you. So we have a motion in a second to add this to the next meeting agenda for discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. With that said, as I said a little bit ago, we're going to take a brief, as in brief, as in five minutes, recess, and come right back.
Recess is over. Back to back to class. <laughs> it's the former teacher in me. <laughs> Go ahead, Madam Mayor. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, we're going to on to regular business 7C, discussion direction, GPS devices, vehicle policy review. This was a carryover from the last meeting at the 11th hour. I brought it up and it was moved to this agenda item. Mr. Bell? Yes. May I ask a question before we start? You sure may. Should there be something? Am I missing something out of my agenda that's not in here? Or it was was should there be something in here regarding that? Or is it excluded? I just need to know. Usually we have like 7A will have something associated with it, 7B, but we don't have anything associated with 7C. Is there? And yes. Is there a reason for that? I'm not sure there's a reason for that, but um, this uh, we'll let Mr. Bell talk first. There wasn't any, though, to, to clarify, there wasn't any supporting documents okay. in the packet. It, does Sunny have an answer? Because she puts the agenda together. Do you have an answer for that, if I may, Madam Mayor? At the time the agenda packet was created, I didn't have any attachments for it. Um, I do know that staff, Mr. Griffith, put together an Excel spreadsheet that was transmitted to the city manager, and I believe it's a, it's a working document. I, I don't know the status of it being... We did all receive that today. That was the vehicles with the GPS devices yeah. within them. So yeah. When do we receive? We got it? that emailed to us today by Mr. Hmm. Bell. What that's time correct. did that come in, Mr. Bell? Well, I'm let sorry. Mr. Bell, that's fine. Let's Mr. Bell talk first, and maybe that will give some clarification to these questions. Sure. So, if you would go to the second part of the slide presentation, there you go. That's the second in part two. What's the next slide? Yes. So this was an item that was uh, requested to be placed on the, uh, the agenda. Uh, and there were some specific requests that were made uh, at the last um, commission meeting for some uh, updated information. And so staff is uh, attempting to be able to respond to those requests. So in a review of the fleet management device, um, the question came up of wh why we don't call it GPS, okay? GPS is, is one of the aspects of what the devices, the onboard uh, fleet management device can do, but it is not the only thing that it can do. It can do so much more than just uh, have a, having a GPS device that tracks uh, your location. And so that's why the the presentation that you have before you is a fleet management onboard device, um, and we're going to talk about uh, what that what that means in greater detail. Um, so the next item: How many area communities have a policy about GPS or fleet management onboard devices? So our staff did some research on that. There aren't any other uh, communities in the area that have. Uh, a policy on GPS. There's only one that we were able to find and their only policy is that we track. That's it. So it really doesn't go into details about uh, fleet management onboard um, device. So where, where does the need for a policy come from? Um, the way that I understand it, that this came came about for the city of Palaka was, uh, according to the staff, the pressure, the the impetus was to get it up and running, to get it installed and get it up and running. Not so much to to look at the various um, uh, aspects of what it can and cannot do, but to get it installed and get it up and running. Now that we've got it installed and up and running, there are so many things that it can be done. We're realizing that, you know, really, maybe we need to have a policy to address how we use it, what it can do, and what are the ramifications of that. So, therefore, came the need of a policy. Now that we see what it does, now that we see that what its capabilities are, there are certain considerations that we have to take into effect. What are those considerations? What can it do? 
who should have access to that information, what roles to find, what they can see, and what they can do in the application. What are the, uh, pro the processing records uh, requests? How do we process those requests? And what are the exemptions to that request based on that information? Next, please. So the current stats, um, the city has 18 users for this uh, fleet management site uh, device. Um, there are eight master accounts, uh, a master account where you can see all and you can do all. Uh, one is uh, read system wide and one is for billing and finance. There are uh, 76 vehicles that, that were in the spreadsheet that was shared, um, 76 vehicles that were installed. Next. So that is a uh, snippet snapshot of the 76 vehicles that uh, were installed with the device. Um, you can go on to the next one. So. Uh, what is our staff recommendation? The assistant city manager was kind enough to volunteer to convene a staff working group. Um, the recommended members of that staff working group are myself, Mr. Griffith, uh, Mr. McMillan, uh, Director of Public Works, uh, Chief Shaw, uh, Ms. West, Ms. Cardi, and Ms. Jones from uh, Human Resources. What is the charge that we're recommending? that we address the capability of the devices and any policy uh, with regard to the vendor and who may have access to the uh, software. Um, should we assess and consider the applicability of the software and any other communities? So taking a look at the other communities um, that have this in place and what they're doing to address it. Consider and include sunshine implications. Consider and design functional uh, roles uh, that define and control the information that you can access and align uh, um, those roles with what the, the software is capable of doing. So that was, go on to the next one, I believe that's. Um, so in the interim, um, let me back up and say this, that was pretty much what the staff recommendation was in response to some of the questions that were asked at the last meeting. Uh, what vehicles are tracked, uh, evaluate the uh, software and come back with a recommendation. In order to do that, we need to put together a working group. Um, in the interim, uh, we're reducing the master accounts to myself, Mr. McMillan, uh, Mr. Griffith, and uh, Chief Shaw. Um, we should flag the access to make sure that we're managing it properly and then uh, schedule, make sure that we move forward with scheduling the working group to meet. So, that is the breadth of where we are right now. And I have some additional information to respond to any questions that uh, the commission might have. Thank you. Uh, and I don't disagree that we need to have more in-depth policy, but the reason this came up was based on the fact that a GPS device was removed from a city vehicle and authorization. I'm not sure who authorized it, frankly. I understand that it was just removed and it was your decision to do that on the right. vehicle that you have been allocated for personal use as well as work use. Mm -hmm. And that is what how this whole topic came up. Yes, maybe we need a more in-depth policy, but the policy we have now does not say you can or can't remove right. it, and you did. And that is my bigger concern. And we can uh, go to the first part of this presentation, and I can provide you some information with regard to the situation with my vehicle in particular. So uh, uh, the ve when I say my vehicle, the vehicle that I was assigned, uh, the Traverse, uh, the device became active on that Traverse on August 29th of 2023, okay? And I pause on that because uh, there were some misunderstandings about when the device actually went active. The former city manager separated from the city on May 12th of 2023. So between May 12th of 2023 and August 29th, the vehicle was rare, rarely used. Uh, prior to the vehicle being, uh, I'm sorry, prior to the uh, former city manager separating on, in May, that vehicle was used, but it was used without a tracking device. Okay. The uh, uh, staff installed the device on the Traverse based on the perceived perception 
that they were receiving direction from the commission to install on all vehicles. Okay. So in my conversations with the previous uh, 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 city attorney, it was her understanding that it was never intended to be installed on the commission vehicle or on the city manager's vehicle. Um, no document has been found yet, uh, yet, as of yet, directing staff to install a device on a commission vehicle or a city manager vehicle. No city document or policy even references a GPS device. To your point, there is nothing that says that it can be or that it can't be. But uh, if you look at when the policy, the vehicle policy was approved, and what it was when it was reviewed, it was reviewed in October October thirteenth of two thousand twenty three. Okay, in that October 2023 review of the vehicle policy by the commission uh, as part of the personnel policy, it specifically says exactly what you said, Madam Mayor, that uh, the city manager's uh, uh, vehicle um, is, uh, or I'm sorry, is controlled by the contract and that it supersedes the vehicle policy. So when you go to the contract, like you said, like you alluded, in the contract, it says that the city manager will be assigned a vehicle for business and personal use. There's nothing that defines what personal use is in any of the city documentation. Okay. The one thing that does uh, stipulate personal use is in the contract. And in the contract, it says uh, that... Uh, the city manager will be signed a vehicle for personal and for business use and shall be required to uh, pay taxes um, via the W-2, citing on the W-2. Can you go to the next slide, please? So we go to if we go to the IRS W-2, um, that is governed by uh, or controlled under IRS document 15B, which states that uh, a personal vehicle, a vehicle that is assigned for personal use, uh, shall be considered uncompensated uh, benefit and shall be treated as revenue and tax according to one of four rule op options. So the fourth rule op option that was selected for this particular vehicle for my W-2 reporting is the rule which says that you reported at 0.67 cents the federal rate per mile of personal use as taxable income. So this speaks to the question that, well, this is free. It's not free. It is represented on the W-2 as required by the contract as taxable income. Go to the next slide, please. The, the vehicle was received by me on February 8th. Uh, well, that's when I was sworn in. It was actually received on February 9th. Um, it was full of dog hair when I got it. Um, it, I had to take it to the auto spa and have it cleaned out, and that was done. Okay. Go ahead. You can Sorry, go to the next I'm slide. Go ahead. I'm a tad bit confused at what we're being presented based on what we requested from oh. our last meeting. I believe the last meeting we requested an update as to the vehicles that we deem necessary to have with the... Mm -hmm. You said not GPS, whatever it's called. Um, I'm board track. Versus, like, I'm confused at this whole presentation. I, okay. am, I am as well. I'm all, I'm okay. all over the place. I, all right. Because I'm trying to get. So give us some direction on where you want to go. Because I direction last. I mean, the last two so the information to get with the vehicles that. From the recommendation mm -hmm. of vehicles that should and vehicles that should. And so, go, I'm sorry, Commissioner. To be honest, I think I think uh, Assistant City Manager Griffith actually was tasked with that because you can, how can you tell us he wasn't here? Mm. So the interpretations and all that stuff probably should come from Mr. Griffith. I, I think that's what you guys are asking. Yeah, because, because what you're telling us, whole, you, go ahead, okay. I just think that this whole presentation is, it, I mean, it. <clears throat> It's not doing anything for me. Well, you have, you have 75 vehicles that are currently installed and you have 85 vehicles all together for the city. What was the conversation that we had when we initially had the conversation surrounding the GPS? Mm -hmm. Are you talking historically in the past? 
because Mr. Mr. Griffiths, could yeah. you possibly Thank respond? And yes, and so while he's coming, can I ask a seat? Sure, yes. go ahead, Commissioner McCaskill. This is the assistant city manager was tasked with this, and he did provide a spreadsheet. Am Correct. I right? Correct. Why didn't we get it before now? Why was there? A, when did you provide him the spreadsheet? It was. Oh. But it was way before today. It was the day before yesterday. So why did you just see? Here's the time, and this this is what I have an issue with. Mm -hmm. Why are we just now getting it right before the meeting? Because and why is it not before us right it now? It was unclear exactly what was wanted in terms of response, and that's why we put together this slide pre presentation. It was unclear to you. Were you able to ask questions of the commission of the direction that they gave the last time? When we got together as staff and reviewed it, we were not sure exactly what the requirement or the request was. We go back to the minutes of the meeting. And the minutes of the meeting indicated that you wanted specific information, which I have addressed in some of the parts of the presentation, as well as the spreadsheet that identifies the 76 vehicles that were installed. That was a, I don't believe that was. Go ahead. Well, but did you, did you want to? I think that the, 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 the original okay. question was who authorized the removal? Who authorized it, I, the installations? And the, and the yeah. commission gave authorization and I, to apply to the vehicles. So if they were on the vehicle and they went and there was one removed, who authorized the removal? Okay. Policy wise. Sure. So it was removed by me. Who make policy? Oh. There was no policy that says that you could or that you could. We made the policy. We did. Right. And the policies. Because they were installed. But it was mistakenly installed. We mistakenly put it on. No, no, no. no you no, didn't. No, 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 no. I think there's confusion because we never made, we never said, we never made that. The, the installation of it based on that was August. The policy and procedure came up in October. So that was installed before we had the discussion. That's why I made the request to say, what was it that we discussed? Now, if there was a misinterpretation, it should have been October there and after, not August. Right. Well, I don't have a problem with the prior, but what we did speak about during that time when Mr. When, when, when the former city manager was here, Don Holmes, that we talked about the installation of the track or the GPS onboarding devices mm -hmm. for the vehicles that we had. So if that was put in place prior, then the then the device was removed. We would just like to know who authorized the removal. So I removed the device. Commissioner McCaskill? That was placed on the vehicle. Council, is that something that he was able to do without bringing it before us? <clears throat> I need to know. I mean, he, he reports, gonna... the city manager reports to you. He, 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 you are his essentially his supervisors. There is not a policy within the city that explicitly prevents it, as he has stated, but. You, you are his supervisor. Correct. And I also, I have to say that on February 27th, when Mr. Bell asked me about removal of it, and I said I could not give permission, it would have to come from the full commission, plus I wanted more information, then it was removed regardless. That's the problem. And, so and, and uh, I addressed some of that in uh, the remainder of the presentation, but... I want to make sure that I'm responsive to your questions. If I may ask, you came with experience as mm -hmm. a city manager. Correct. So you know protocol, pot, policy, prop. Mm -hmm. You said he came to you and asked we you what you can a, do. We were having a meeting, not about this specifically, but we were meeting and he asked about the removal of that tracking device, whatever we would like to call it. And I said, I could not give authorization and had to go before the commission that I 
I couldn't do that. And plus, I would like more information about policies, which I wasn't as familiar with as I should have been, but I pulled them all off. So I want to ask this in a diplomatic manner, but I'm just going to ask, what were your thoughts? What were your thoughts when you went to the mayor to ask her to remove the device off the vehicle versus coming to the commission as a whole? I did not. What did you expect her to be able to do without us? I did not ask the mayor uh, to remove the device. But what uh, can she do about it? Versus so, coming to all of us. It was my intention to make sure that in the sunshine, that in every one of the one-on-ones that I did, that I had a conversation about the GPS device and the removal of the D GPS device. I indicated in my meeting with her that I intended to remove the GPS device. And I wanted to make sure that in each of the one-on-ones that I did, that I had that conversation to state that I had intended to remove the device based on the information that I was given, which was the contract and the policy document. The conversation, I don't know what conversation he had with you all, but the conversation with me was the concern about the device. But anyway, let me ask my one, my questions. Mm -hmm. What is your concern with the device being on the vehicle? So I'm glad you asked that question because uh, there's a public records request that was done for GPS information. If I, I understand was, that, what's your concern with the with the device being on the vehicle? Because of the more. fact that there are or have been assertions made based on the whereabouts of the vehicle that suggested that I was doing something that was nefarious when I was not. They were uh, tracking, it is tracking, that I was in St. Augustine. Well, yes, I was in St. Augustine because my very close friend was in the hospital and he was in critical care. So I went to see him. The very first week that I came here, I didn't have any place to stay, but I started work the next day. And so I stayed in various hotels around the area in order to find a place to live. Fortunately, I now have a place. But all those places that I stayed were being tracked, and there were assertions made on our uh, city Facebook page as to this idea that I lived in these places. The other assertion that was made was that I was at a residential address in Daytona at two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Personal use. I was visit visiting my dad. My dad's in the audience here. He's 92 years old. But the assertion was that I was doing something nefarious because I was at these residential addresses at two o'clock in the morning. So you wanted to move just based on assertions. There was no, there were no other reasons that you wanted the device. I was concerned about the safety and security of my family based on the fact that people were tracking where I was on my personal time. And in my conversation with the AFCI, AFCL, I always get that acronym incorrect. This is a question about uh, religious uh, freedom. It is a question uh, associated with that because when people track where you are, and they are looking at what you are, where you're at on your personal time. That is going to be uh, uh, a safety and security issue. I'm gonna stop. Did, this did stuff. you share your concerns with the chief of police? If you were that concerned, did you at any point reach out in house to the chief of police? And I had conversations stuff? with the chief of police. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner Campbell. I'm still confused. I, me too. <laughs> but I'm confused more so as to the discussion and direction that we want as the commission. If we want it to be placed back on there. I want it to be placed back on there. Or, again, it's based on contract. So the desires of, and I think, again, my recommendation that we made on the last meeting was to see, bring back a recommendation of vehicles that we deem necessary for the trackers to be on and those to take in consideration that did not. And we as a commission would make the final determination as to if they are worthy of not having or having. That was the recommendation that I made. And so- yeah, Provided no recommendation. And so that's why I'm getting to this. I was when I said I was confused more so with the presentation because the presentation did not hit on the recommendation or the request that was made from the commission. So this whole presentation, I appreciate it, but I think it just 
did more damage than good. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you can go ahead. But I, I, again, in order for us to take this thing back by the horn and steer it in the right direction, what do we desire as a commission? Because it requires a policy change, if I'm not mayor. I, <laughs> and just for the for the community, I know a Mayor West, so I apologize. Attorney West, help steer me in the right direction with regards to there was a contract that was signed versus policy, which says we allowed, we didn't allow. So I just want to make sure that as we move forth as a commission, that we are able to give clear direction, but we must take in consideration that a contract is already signed. Where does that put us with regards to the signed contract? Sure, you do have a policy in place. However, the policy explicitly states that a city manager contract can supersede that policy. When you look at the city manager's contract that you executed on February 8th, mm -hmm. there is no provision in there that speaks about GPS tracking removal or, or, or altering the current policy. It is silent on that provision. So you are not bound contractually one way or the other in your decision-making process about the GPS on the vehicle. Thank you. So as we move forward, what, and Mayor, I'm not trying to take over your position, but this will go on all night. We and we're not in mm -hmm. jury. We're not, we're, he's not on trial. We're trying to make sure that, again, as we move forth as an organization, that we take in consideration all of the vehicles and the vehicles that we think deserves to have it versus not and allow us to make the determination as a whole instead of singling out Mr. Bell at this point. He may he he's he's already told us he didn't ask for permission. He did it. So that's already been made clear. But I think in order for us to move forward to op handle this as an handle this approach as a whole I still make the recommendation that staff, whatever that team that was associated, bring us back the vehicles that they think should have the tracking devices versus the vehicles that shouldn't and allow the commission to do what we have to do and then move forward. Thank you, Commissioner well, Borum. The only issue I have is that it, it, irregardless of whether the whether it was stated or not, um, he, he approached the, the mayor and asked the mayor, if it was okay to remove it. And that she said that, okay, she said that um, she asked him to bring that before the commission. So on his own, he decided to remove the device. That's my issue. So going forward, things that you deem that you looking at whatever contract that you would go to whatever extent to do whatever not is, is not, um, specifically stated i i think that's dangerous well because there's a number of you got a lot of latitude and th those are some of the things that came before that preceded you that people were saying that you were saying that was not true in 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 the um, um internet space so let me that's my issue and concern let me respond to this respond to that well it, it, it does let, because let, this is what I'm talking about. When we when we when we say the commission has the 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 final authority, you went against what the commission had already put in place, and you asked the mayor, and the mayor asked you to come before the commission that's and you just removed the device. That's what I, that's my problem. That's okay, not, so that's, that's not, not entirely true because it wasn't written specifically. Right. I mean, However, I think again to make alter a vehicle that's a city vehicle. Should have come before the commission, but here we are. And I'm gonna, Campbell? And I'm gonna say this. He went to, to mayor. If mayor thought it was appropriate for it to be brought to the commission, it should have been brought to the commission prior to the commission meeting. Which means either it should have been initiated by Mr. Bell and or the mayor. And I cannot speak to you individually, and I also didn't have time before it was removed. From the time we discussed it, it was removed prior, well before the next meeting. I did not have an opportunity to even get it on the agenda. So with regards to your conversation 
that's that's I'm not you're not on I'm not doing that. Yeah. But anyway, in order for us to steer this back in the right direction, it's been done. We as the commission have the authority to put it back on there or keep it off. I'm giving the request to again have all vehicles, which we have. I'm asking for a recommendation of vehicles that we deemed necessary for the tracking devices to be on and those that don't. As a result of that, we will be able to make a decision as a whole. And as a part of that decision, if we deem it appropriate for the tracking devices to be on any and all vehicles, we have that authority. Commissioner McCaskill, I feel that the device should be put back on the vehicle in the meantime while that is being done. That's my recommendation for it to be placed back on the vehicle for that process to take place with identifying vehicles and come back with staff recommendation. But I move for it to be put back on the vehicle immediately. Thank I you. second. I second it. Okay, and let, but then Commissioner Jones has something to say first. And then we'll go to that. Process. So after that debate and me listening, as the folk in the audience, um, and if we're gonna put it back on, Mr. Bills, I would like to make a motion right now to put the tracking devices on all city-owned vehicles. So it's only fair. Everybody, has. if he had to have it, everyone else should. And if I was an employee and I had to have a tracking device, why not everyone else? Okay, so we have a motion, <clears throat> excuse me, and a second. So it's now up for discussion, uh, or you can seek to amend the motion that is currently on the floor. The mo there is no motion uh, because it was not called. it was not acknowledged by the mayor. Yeah, because I was letting discussion go. Okay, okay, okay so we need Let's a motion. Do Let's do a decent and motion. Do we need a motion? I move to have the device put back on the device put back on the vehicle until we receive the requested information from the commission identifying the vehicles that they suggest. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second for reinstallation of the device. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a discussion? Because I think, again. Okay, discussion. I'm got, I, mean, I thought we had a lengthy discussion, but go ahead. So, as the attorney was saying, to kill it, well, I shouldn't say kill it. No, that's to to make this complete, and we don't have to. Commissioner Campbell also alluded to we can make that determination now. We don't have to wait the staff tell us. We know what the situation is. If we want everyone to have it now, we can. But if we if we're only gonna address him, I'm fine with that as well. But uh, we could kind of like nip it in the bud. It's only ten other vehicles that don't have. It. I don't know if those vehicles are parked or being actually I, used. I think, Mr. Mr. Griffith, are you going to speak to that or Chief Shore and oh, Chief Taylor's not here? So it may be more prudent to wait on those vehicles because there would be some budget implications that were not baked into the current fiscal year's mm -hmm. budget. And most of those are public safety um, vehicles that we deemed we didn't want the GPS tracking for obvious reasons, um, just for disclosure related to police enforcement activities. Thank you. And we also have several folks for public comment on this particular topic. So, right, there's a motion on the floor in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, Aye. Any opposition? Did you vote either way? You got a vote, sir. So, all in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. Okay, I would like to clarify, Madam Mayor, that I was not instructed to bring the matter before commission. Um, I shared that I had intended to uh, remove the device. Uh, the mayor did say that she could not make a decision on her own. Uh, she asked me if I was going to bring it to the rest of the commissioners. And I said, yes, that was my intent on the one on one to bring it to the attention of each of the commissioners. So I just want to clarify that I did not directly um, go against a request or recommendation by the mayor. So I'm going to open the floor to public comment. Mr. Bliss, three minutes, please. Name and address for the record. Yes. My name is Gary Bliss. I'm at 134 Cedar Creek, Alaska, 32177. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. The honor. 
and the Honorable Commission. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Now, I read with interest, like everybody else did, the numerous job changes, all the things that were on the internet, uh, the numerous job changes, either fired or left, problems with other jobs that he had, uh, was he a lecturer or not a lecturer, uh, questions about his education, uh, you know, mishandling of pay, uh, flashing badges when he shouldn't have been flashing badges, impersonating a police officer, inappropriate contracts signed by the city, uh, questions about the validity of the resume. And he said in, in, a, in a quote, said, not deliberately inaccurate. So I read with all that stuff. It was interesting to read all that. But, um, you know, everything was cleared up. And no, and no outstanding charges were, were pressed against him. Uh, all the arrests that he had, uh, where all the charges were dropped. So all that made him eligible to be the mayor. And he's traveled from one end of the country to another, carrying with him a lot of baggage. He's been picking up baggage along the way. And now that baggage is up right here in Palatka, Florida. And that's what bothers me the most. So now while all charges were dismissed, there was, there's enough out there to show that this is a pattern of behavior. So I'm open-minded though. So I thought I'd give him a chance. I thought I would give him a chance to show that he's really de dedicated to Palatka and wants to see Palatka move forward. So I was really wanted to give him a chance. But this pattern of behavior and the GPS situation has demonstrated that this pattern of behavior has not changed. And tonight, and the city commission has even pointed that out, that the commission has pointed out that information is not coming to them. Uh, the, you know, there's no information that's being presented back and forth. So this is a pattern of behavior that's been going on every place he's been. So every place he's been. So this is a pattern of arrogance and hubris. And this hubris has gone on tonight as well because he's been refusing to answer questions directly. We saw this nice presentation up there where it was all just fluff. There was nothing to it. He's basically avoiding what the, the question was. Why did he take the GPS off? Because he felt like it was his right to do so. And he said at one time he felt like it was a, a matter of public, uh, safety for himself because he was a police officer 26 years ago. I'm sorry. That's kind of a bogus excuse. But now, uh, as we go forward, though, there's even a bigger issue that I want to concern myself with is that in the 2020 census, we showed that the Palatka and P Putnam County itself has gone down in population because the, and I say because I say because we're not hiring the right people to to move this commission forward, move this county forward. We're not hiring the right people. And now we got this situation where we got a city manager who's thumbing his nose at you, you, the mayor and you, the city commission and the people of Palatka to, uh, you know, basically say, I'm the city manager. I'll do what I want. And that's not what we need. We need somebody with a vision who will take this community forward and, uh, and uh, you know, allow businesses to grow and prosper. But how can we do that with the baggage that we have? I have nine seconds left. I yield my time. Oh. Ms. Kitchens. Allegra Kitchens, 1027 South 12th Street, Palatka, Florida. I agree with the move that the commission made, and I agree with Commissioner Jones. I think you either have them on all vehicles, with the exception of police vehicles. That's a different thing. The patrol cars must not have GPS or fleet maintenance, whatever you call those things. They can't be tracked. But I think every other employee in the city either has to have it or all of them don't have it. You can't discriminate and let one have his not have the GPS and the others have GPSs with, again, the exception of the police department, which are under a clear and present danger. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else here for public comment on this particular agenda item? Saying no, i close public comment. Thank you. On to discussion direction, land swap, the St. John's River Environmental Center at 102 North 1st Street, 100 and 102 Reed Street, request to Blue Crab Development Group North LLC. Mr. Bell, Mr. Griffith, who's going to? I'm sorry, Madam Mayor. Uh, this item was requested by um, the Blue Crab LLC, and so they are going to provide us with a presentation. Okay. Who is going to come up to the podium for, Blue, for the group? Thank you. Please give your name. Charlie Douglas, 117 North 2nd Street, Palatka. <laughs> agreed upon 10 minute time allocation. Yeah. Um, Madam Mayor, may I ask Mr. Douglas if he wants the clicker or if he wants me to just next, for advance my next slide or? Is that the time frame that's allowed, uh, allocated to all? We've been giving people five minutes in fairness. It's what we've usually given folks. So we should be consistent. I, I would advise that I, I did give them 10 minutes um, as per the direction of my superior. Ooh. Mr. Bell. I, I suggested five, 10 minutes. 
Okay. Because it's a very, very, very lengthy presentation. And I, I don't see how you would get it within. Well, I don't minutes. want to people here, but we need to again. In the interest of time, to the rest of the folks that come up and we give them five, we'll give everybody some of those 10. But okay. In, in the interest of time, I won't go through the PowerPoint okay. slides. I believe that is in your packet for reference. Okay. And I will just stick to my prepared comments. Okay. Thank you. Madam Mayor, Commissioners, Mr. Manager, Madam Attorney, and fellow citizens of Palatka. I come before you tonight with a vision for the 100 block that will activate the River Center, bridge our city's past with our future, unite all voices in our community, and continue the positive economic revitalization of our downtown. Four years ago, I became the newest caretaker for the historic brick building across the street. My goal was to contribute a small part in the overall revitalization of our downtown. It was important to me that we honored the architectural character of the original structure from 1886, and that we remodeled the interior to something that would make Palatka proud. But we must not rest on our laurels at the 100 block. There is more to do, and the time is now. During the course of the last 10 years, the River Center has not been able to reach its full potential. Activating the entertainment district is an integral component of the revitalization efforts and overall economic development. To support the efforts, I have purchased from Mr. Skeet Offord our local AM FM radio stations, WIYD and WPLK. We just received the green light from the Federal Communications Commission for the license transfer. And I'm excited to announce in public for the first time that our new brand will be called Bass Capital Radio. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the members of Bass Capital Radio who are here tonight in support of this project. If you would, please stand. That's Mary, Susan, and George. Thank you. The radio station's focus will be local, local, local. We want to promote the good in our town. The out-of-town TV stations who tell all the bad about us, or the Washington Post who questions if we are a dying city, should not have the last word about us. Bass Capital Radio would like to broadcast live from the banks of the St. John's River inside a portion of the River Center. This will serve as a place for locals and visitors alike to come in and hear about local events, participate in all the happenings, and learn what is special about Palatka. We are also excited to announce tonight the Bass Capital Radio podcast trailer, currently parked across the street. The intent of this podcast trailer is to reach all quadrants of our community and capture the incredible stories of our citizens the lives they have lived, and the legacies they will leave behind. We want to listen to our elders before it's too late. Their history is our shared history and is worthy to be saved. We want the River, the River Center to be a bridge to our past so we can all appreciate from whence we came, but at the same time, a bridge to the future, a bridge that is built with hard work, determined spirit, persistent effort, and an unwavering resolve to reach its fullest potential. First, we will accomplish activating the River Center by launching a summer Friday night concert series. We will simulcast those performances on Bass Capital Radio for all in our community to hear, in case some of our fellow citizens are not able to enjoy in person. Jazz, piano, saxophones, ragtime, quartets will all play and send the melodies of Palatka's rich music history down St. John's Avenue and along the banks of the St. John's River. We want to feature and promote as much as possible our local up and coming artists. We have asked the Bartram Trail Society and they have agreed to stay in house with us so we can continue to showcase that part of our history as well. Second, we must activate the water, charter boat rentals, Sunset sailing tours, jet skis, paddle boards, kayaks, maybe even seaplanes. When people come across the bridge, we want them to see our riverfront hustling and bustling with activity. 
and give them a reason to stop and explore our city. At the same time, a rising tide must lift all boats and all of our citizens. We cannot focus just on one part of the city alone and leave behind any other segment of our community. May I have permission to continue? I'm sorry, please. May I have permission to continue? Um, but try to make it as quickly as possible. Again, to be fair to everybody in our district. We must uh, work in concert to support the growth of the 11th Street Commercial Corridor by bringing back the barber shops and the pool halls, restaurants, and implementing beautification projects, honoring the Belton House and completing the A. Philip Randolph Transportation Hub. We must support higher density. And third, we must activate the hearts of our youth. And this is the core of the presentation here is that we want to create a community where our young people choose to live, work, and play. Let's educate our future generations about the rich history of our past generations and instill pride in our community. In your packet, there are additional talking points about Jenkins and using that as a venue for an incubator and for a Shark Tank style mentor-mentee relationship. So to bridge the gap between our young entrepreneurs and seed capital, and also the STEM pathways. Uh, the proposal is before you in your packet. It, it is a uh, contract that uh, we created and has been vetted by your attorney. And uh, the, the price of the contract is to be determined transparently, openly, and by a third party neutral. And uh, the pendulum could swing either way, so if the River Center is more on the appraisal side and the Fort Consolidated property is less, then I would make up the difference and vice versa. As I conclude, I ask you to imagine with me a River Center that is fully alive from the inside, from the rooftop, and from the banks of the St. John's. Imagine an entertainment district with more programs, people, and events. And imagine a day where we are able to keep here all of our best and brightest. The city can only do so much. The private sector must do its part, and we are here tonight. Now we have the human capital to make this a reality. Now we have the talent and the passion and the determination to see this through. And now we need your help to fulfill this vision. Finally, the words of Tennyson endure on this occasion that Palatka is strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Let's get to work. Thank you, Mr. Douglas. Do you have a question? Uh, I, I've seen the renderings. I don't know if the people in the audience have seen them. So could you guys, you know, show the audience and hopefully we can capture that with the video uh the people that are watching from home. So the, the nuts and bolts of the proposed land swap is this is before the land swap, and it's our current ownership structure with this the city owned city hall here. And then I own the, the former Fort Consolidated piece of this block. And then on the other side of Reed Street, I own this part in blue, and the city owns this part in yellow. And the proposal is to, to, to land swap uh, so that the ownership would, after the land swap, look like this. Where the city would own all of this block, and we would own the totality of the city. And maybe flipping it so the folks yeah, and the, the audience can see. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Douglas? We do have several people who want to make a public comment. Okay, Mr. Well, and I, I think you mentioned also that. Um, so. You're you're off for profit. So when if 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 the if this deal goes forth, then that property then becomes taxable. Yes, sir. At whatever the um, um uh, said amount is. So right now it's off the tax roll. Yes, sir. Yeah. So um, that's just another thing that I um, think kind of adds to add to it as well as the um appraisal, whatever the appraisal uh value is. Uh, you said that you would make up the difference up to one million, not, uh, almost a million. It's right. So the, the pendulum could swing either way. Um, we don't know what that that is. The independent appraiser will determine the values there, uh, but it would be capped at a million. Okay. So those are the things we need to consider. You know? right. And also to remember that 
would that plot consolidator would come off the tax rolls reciprocally. Right. We didn't so see the what goes the... on, plot consolidator comes off. If it is currently. Right. Just so that's clear to everybody. And, Go ahead, Commissioner. And he Council. does. And you do say you have a, a, a vested interest in investing in some other, throughout this process, some other properties in the city to help with housing or beautification of the revitalization of the city? Is Absolutely. That, that we can consider? So the presentation night is a culmination of uh, probably over 100 hours that we've been fortunate enough to spend with many of the commissioners and staff and stakeholders in our community. And we've been grateful to hear the feedback. And one of the things that we heard over and over again, uh, which has uh, rung true and, and we are committed to, mm -hmm. is that one part of the city cannot benefit while another part is ignored, that a, a truly a rising tide must lift all boats. And uh, as we think about the north side and the 11th Street corridor and what that heartbeat of commercial activity meant to the history of our city mm -hmm. and in its current state, we're especially excited about the opportunity to invest in that area as well and bring it back to life with the, the barbershops, the restaurants, the pool halls, uh, recreational activities, maybe uh, like swimming pools uh, to serve the residents and, and have a place where uh, people can participate in the transportation hub, also the commercial activity, and then above the commercial infill with residential so that there's that critical mass with the residential side to support the commercial. Thank you, Commissioner Borum. And, and to, um, I think prior to uh, the city manager coming on board, we did uh, pass where uh, we gave direction for to establish the CRA from the hub down Madison, as well as back towards um, the uh, other streets where it ends, um, the, the north tip ends, fourth and a half street. So from fourth and a half north, uh, we were looking at those areas to help create a CRA district, and um, we were we, we we approved that. We approved the funding for the study. Absolutely, we did see some of that activity with some of, of the residential side, some of the new structures that have come. In, in the last 12 months in that particular area. Any additional Thanks. questions from Ms. Douglas? Oh. Well, and that's what I was gonna open up to public comment, Ms. Puritan. Good evening. My name is Shan Purinton. My husband and I now reside since December 29th, 2023 at 8429 Fleet Landing Boulevard, Atlantic Beach, Florida, 32233. First, I thank the commissioners, Madam Mayor, City Manager, staff, for allowing me to speak for my about my support of this proposal. As many of you know, I grew up here and I've called it home for over 60 years. So I'm only 61. <laughs> okay. Mike and I still think of Palatka as home. One of the many high points of living here has been my association with the St. John's River Center. I was asked to serve on the Community Advisory Committee and was part of the initial planning phases. After the center opened in 2015, I coordinated the volunteers who helped the city to staff it for several years. In fact, the last time I was here at a city commission meeting, was in December last year, and you honored me with a plaque and a wonderful proclamation and appreciation for my volunteer work at the River Center, Waterworks, and other local organizations. Tonight, I am truly excited about the possibility of an expanded future for the River Center. My understanding is that the proposal will maintain the essence of what the River Center was designed to be, upgrade the facility and opportunities within the River Center, and elevate the experience that our visitors and guests have when they stop to visit our wonderful community. The Bartram Trail Society has a rich history and it is currently headquartered at the River Center. We look forward to raising the bar for the Bartram Frolic in conjunction with the River Center. More foot traffic and more programming will elevate so many efforts in Palatka. 
Therefore, I strongly support this proposal. Charlie Douglas has demonstrated in many ways that he cares for our city and its people. I am hopeful that this proposal will be approved and that the River Center can realize its full potential. This in turn could have very positive economic ripple effects for the whole community. As an indicator, the continuous care retirement community where Mike and I now live has already asked me to help organize a day trip to Palatka to see the murals and specifically to visit the River Center. Palatka definitely has incredible potential. I truly believe this proposal is one more step toward realizing it. Again, many thanks for your time and positive consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kitchens? Allegra Kitchens, 1027 South 12th Street, Palatka, Florida. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention something that Mr. Douglas missed. Uh, our roving reporter, Marsha Lane, also works with radio stations, and she's a great asset to our community and has been for many years. It's her job at the uh, Palatka Daily News, the Putnam County Courier Journal, and many other news areas. So I just want to make sure that she gets recognized as a member of the radio station. Uh, you all, somebody mentioned about, well, is the property is coming off the tax roll that uh, – that is next to your, the property that Mr. Douglas owns right now that he wants to swap with the River Center is coming off the tax roll. Well, it's only assessed at a little over $322,000. So that's no big deal coming off the tax roll. But the River Center and that property, which is going on the tax roll, is assessed at over $1.2 million. So that's going to be an asset, asset to you. And in my opinion, this is a win-win situation. First, for the, it's win-win for the city, and it's win-win for the uh, Blue Crab Development Group. For the city, you have the opportunity to square up the city hall property. That way you have the opportunity to expand city hall when you get ready. Big, the biggest thing is based on the property appraiser's values. And the appraiser is not going to come in any lower than the property appraiser does. I can tell you that right now. Based on the property appraiser's values, Douglas's property that he wants to swap you for is currently appraised at $322,840. Your property at the River Center and on the, the second, the 100 block is appraised at $1,184,965. That's a difference of $862,125 based on the property appraiser's value. And in the contract that are in the, uh, the note that Mr. Douglas's firm uh, provided, he said that they would pay the difference up to $999,999. This is an $800,000 win for the city. The river center's up, kept in, by a very good person. He's got super good plans. You can don't have to. You can expand city hall if you need to. Win win all the way around. I support it fully. Thank you. Thank Did you. I just hear Miss Kitchen? Okay, thank you. Was that Miss um, Kitchens? Yeah, <laughs> we believe so. John Alexander. Since there are two Mr. Alexanders in the room, I'll give the first name. Thank you, Mayor Correa, <clears throat> uh, City Manager, uh, Honorable Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. I've known Charlie Douglas since he was in the fourth grade, <laughs> <laughs> participating in my music classes, my talent shows, my holiday programs, square dancing, learning all about and all uh, learning how to appreciate various types of music. Uh, this all took place at Kelly Smith, previously known as Silver Lake Elementary School. Charlie was an ideal student. He was enthusiastic, he was energetic, and eager to learn. Did I say that he was eager to learn? He was extremely eager to learn, more than eager. Because of Charlie and so many more like him, I remained at Kelly Smith for almost 50 years. I see the same eagerness and that fire and that passion in Charlie today. That energy is catching. It makes you want to join in and make things happen. It makes you want to make things better. His vision for St. John's Avenue and the riverfront 
and combining properties to create a dynamic cultural entertainment complex for the whole community, utilizing local talent is nothing short of genius. It's the characteristics of someone who cares for his community. It's the characteristics of someone who loves his community. By collaborating with our citizens and local government, Charlie Douglas and the Blue Crab Development Group, in my opinion, can be a shot in the arm for our little town called Palatka, Florida. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Thank you. Would you please don't call me. Mr. Alexander? Yes, sir. Would you please give your address, though? I'm sorry. That's okay. It's uh, 919 Car Street, Palatka. Thank you. Ms. Gilead? I'm not going to bother this. The preacher in me would say, without a vision, a people perish. The teacher in me would say, you can become anything you desire to become. And that's what I saw in this young man when I taught him many years ago at Kelly Smith Elementary School. Came in, as Ms. Alexander said, John only had the uh, good fortune of having Charlie for specials when he would go to music. But I was uh, treated with Charlie what about six and a half hours, but it was <laughs> it was just awesome. He Charlie had a, a passion for all of the students in the class. He cared about those that uh, lived on. It didn't matter which side of town you lived on or which side of the railroad track. It did not matter to him. He just loved people. And when uh, my niece met Charlie, she declared that he was going to become a preacher, but <laughs> instead he became an attorney. And uh, when I was at Price Middle School, I, I just had to allow those students to meet someone with the passion that this young man has. And he came and he spoke to that graduating class from Price Middle School. But the reason I stand here tonight, uh, yes, I can say all those great things about Charlie and he's not paying me a cent. It was just the fact that I love him and his passion and his commitment to education. But the young man's vision. He is one of those that could have gone anywhere. He could set up residence anywhere. He has gone as far as Texas to defend a young man he didn't even know, but he knew the young man had gotten a raw deal. That's how I've been keeping up with him. Uh, he let me down and not let me know about the children and the twins when they were born, but that's okay. We'll deal, <laughs> we'll deal with that at another time. But this young man has a... a a vision for our young people here in Putnam County to offer uh, an opportunity for them to blossom right here so that as he stated, our best and our brightest won't leave, won't think that I have to go for the bright lights. It's happening right here in Putnam County. And with that vision he has for the uh, place across the street and, and setting up STEM for our children that can let our young people get an early jump on, on this educational uh, endeavor to become great at whatever it is they, they choose to become. Uh, I told him or somebody the story tonight uh, when I was out at Aquila, we were doing our bugs dinner, bringing up grades, trying to encourage our kids to do the best they can to become the best that they could become. And uh, I wanted the Jacksonville Jaguars, at least two of them, to just show up. They, they could just be on the practice roster, just show up and say something to motivate our children. And they made, they sent me some little trinkets or something. And, and they made the comment that uh, the distance that they would have to travel to get to Putnam County was kind of out of their range. And I'm thinking, I'm not that bright, but <laughs> It's the same distance from Interlochen as it was to Jacksonville. Uh, let us get behind this young man and support him. He's not one that's just going to grab it and run. He is all about making everybody around him, as he said, rise. I don't know that much about fishing and boats and all of that. <laughs> but if you said it's so, it's so. We all going to rise together. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Address my card, please. Thank you. Oh, could you please? I'm sorry. Uh, Sandra Gilliard, 
Uh, you want my 111, uh, my post office box. I live in San Mateo, God's country, but my mailing address is 465 San Mateo, Florida, 32187. Uh, physical address is 111 Live Oak Street, right down from Brown and Pierce. Thank you. Jeremy Alexander? Name and address, please. Jeremy Alexander, 134 Timber Lane, Palatka, Florida. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, City Staff uh, and Community Leadership for coming here tonight in support of this project. Um, I want to share a little bit about my history uh, with the River Center, and then I want to talk about all the good things that came out of the conversations we had as a community. Um, I started my career when I came back to Palatka with Georgia Pacific 24 years ago. Um, I inherited a project, no differently than Dr. Shan inherited at one point, um, a project that included $200 million of environmental upgrades at the Georgia Pacific paper mill in Palatka. I believe Ms. Commissioner Borum um, was at GP at that time. Uh, there was an agreement reached between the EPA's Blue Ribbon Team, FDEP, St. John's River Water Management District, and industry experts that said if you install the best available technology uh, on the market at your facility and are still unable to meet the color and conductivity requirements in Rice Creek, then we will allow you to relocate your discharge. We also wanted you to, in exchange for that, we want you to construct an environmental education center for your community. Unfortunately, the tragedy of 9-11 hit our community just a couple of years later. Um, as a result of that, Georgia Pacific became a MARSEC regulated facility because they bring Bunker C fuel oil in via barge, which made them a potential terrorist target. Uh, some conversations transpired from there. The city of Palatka agreed with the other agencies to allow the River Center to be relocated from the banks of Rice Creek to the banks of the St. John's River so it could be accessed by our community as a whole. And that was the essence of the St. John's River Center. Uh, now it's naturally become the welcome center to Palatka. And Mr. Douglas is here today proposing it's time to elevate that center. Um, when I went to work for Charlie in November, I walked by that center every day and I asked Charlie if uh, there were plans for the St. John's River Center. He said, there's an agreement in place, as I understand it. I said, well, would you mind if I call my former boss and see what the status of the agreement is? She agreed uh, that they had already been in conversations about terminating that agreement in hopes of doing something for the greater good. The city of Palatka uh, met with representatives of GP, the Blue Crab Development Group, and we came up with what we think is a win-win, win-win for this community, Palatka, and the Blue Crab Development Group. Uh, what I'd like to touch on, I know I'm about out of time, but just some things that came out of the conversations. Um, there was a plan that was good and how this commission and community stakeholders made it great. Um, things that weren't originally included that are now potentially a welcome center that invites passersby into our wonderful town uh, that highlights the rich music history that we have, uh, daily features of our local artists, continuing educations beyond the environmental education that's already part of the River Center, inclusion of the original F essence of the River Center, and while it remains home to the Bartram Trail, activation of the riverfront, um, capturing our oral history that cannot be found anywhere else in our community. And I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna comment on the last two that I think are extremely important. One of, one of our commissioners initiated this conversation and it resonated for the through the rest of the commission. And that was, let's not just focus on the river center, take a ride with me. So we loaded up and honestly, we headed to the north side and um, we went to what is now uh, well, the previous home of the Belton family who happens to be on a very beautiful mural in the city of Palatka, um, but now has been dilapidated. And, and I think we're having some conversations as to what we're gonna do. But next to that is a vacant lot that's owned by the city. As you travel down 11th street, get closer to Olive, there are three other city owned vacant lots. And I just wanna commend this city for making sure that this group understands the other opportunities that exist in our community. And I want this commission to understand that that group has already reached out to your city and staff and ask for how we can move this project forward on the north side of Palatka. 
So there are three ideal locations for us to do something special. We ran into a lady named Miss Sylvia on that drive who deserves better. And uh, we want to be part of that solution as well. Uh, I would ask that that we think about that just as just as quickly as we can because the opportunity is now as well. Thank you for Thank your time. You. Sorry for running. Is there anybody else here for public comment on this agenda item? Mr. Triano, name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> Uh, Madam Mayor, um, Jim Troiano, 2000 Reed Street. I'm an employee at Beck Sloan Properties. Um, I represent an investor, and that investor and I and our, our group, we fully support empowering and changing the River Center and seeing prosperity happen. In addition to the things that Mr. Douglas mentioned, also about ecotourism and, and seeing growth and development happen in that area. As you know, that we're very active in the 200 block and the 300 block of St. John's Avenue. And so if I may, I'd like to ask a point of clarification. In the paperwork that was provided, this uh, sales agreement, uh, property agreement, it lists only two properties that the city has that Mr. Douglas and his group are asking to swap with the city. However, if you look at the actual map itself, there is a third parcel that's there. And I'm wondering if that parcel is also going to be included in the swap itself. I have uh, a document here that I can provide as well as a larger map that I obtained from the property appraisers. I also have a second question that I'd like to ask after finding um, this out, please, if I may. Go ahead. Um, well, my second question would be, will there be opportunity for others to um, make a proposal, to make an offer to the city uh, to provide funding to do the same thing, but to offer it as a competitive process. And I'm wondering if that will happen tonight or will that happen at another time? Because if it won't happen, I do have an offer to make the city on behalf of my investor for this property. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, thank you, Mr. Triano. Um, any discussion that, or any questions for the questions that the commission had? I know. But, but, but. When I, we don't answer on public comments, so if there's anything further. As long as I don't need to make a proposal now for something, I won't have the opportunity later. I just need clarification on that. If so, I'll make it, but I'd rather not make it if there is going to be an opportunity for others to have an opportunity to provide a proposal to the city. And this is discussion direction. Thank you for the public comment. I don't know. Again, we have to discuss first. Okay. And see what direction this commission wants to go in. Okay. Thank, um, you. thank you, Madam Mayor. Is anybody else here for public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Discussion? Direction? Question? Commissioner Campbell? Do you have any discussion questions? I think. I'm going to say the fund rate, yes. Okay. Commissioner Jones? As far as I think that <clears throat> there's a lot of information that was a lot provided. Of uh, you know, I've talked to the group, and uh, I think we should definitely consider consider what the public had to say. But you know, it's a lot to consider. They didn't have another offer here, so that's something that <clears throat> I think we we could talk about the legal ramifications as far as. There was a proposal, and then almost like a counter proposal here in this meeting. So, I would like to have some direction later. Then, I think we could table this to some other time, and uh, may come back and make a decision. Thank you. How are we going to proceed? Okay. Are you asking Miss West to give you more information? No. No, I just took gave you my Commissioner Borum. Um. And well, I guess at this point in time, based on what what we're hearing, is uh, we would have to probably. Uh, table it until we uh, make w w table it until further discussion. Commissioner McCaskill, I agree with tabling this, but the fact that they've already, I, I agree with tabling it, but I would like to say this they've done their presentation, shared their amounts, and then you have a counter proposal. Yeah. I mean, that that right there just kind of sits yeah. sideways with yeah, me. I'm not, I'm but not, I don't have an issue with tabling this and moving. I'm not friendly to the disclosure of the, I don't um, appreciate the information that, that they provided. And, and they call it a counter proposal. And there's a counter. So that's my only issue with that. 
Go ahead, Commissioner Campbell. I will state that I'm in favor of tabling. Um, and I did pose this question to Mr. Alexander as to how did we get here? Um, so I think that is very, uh, was it, I'm just a tad bit confused as to, when I say confused, I'm more interested in knowing how did, was this something that was put out stating that um, it was open for conversation? How did we get to this point? And I think in order for our, for me to be at ease, I think that conversation should be had as to how did we get here with this respective organization, um, just for clarity purposes. Um, I will admit that I am, had several conversations um, with Mr. Douglas, as well as Mr. Alexander. Um, and I'm optimistic about the future of the riverfront as a whole, that 100 block. But I think it's important for us to know how did we get to this point? What conversations transpired? Was this something that went out to the public saying that we were interested or vice versa? Um, I do believe that this side, uh, I'm a little thrown at the spade that was just put on the table. Um, I, I, I it's just, that just thrown me, but um, I don't want us as a elected body to move off of emotions or a move off because we have something dangling in our face. I believe that if anybody was interested in anything as that organization has come to us before with other opportunities that we have not seen come to fruition. Um, but I would be interested in just knowing how did we get here? And I'll be even more interested in knowing why you put that spade out tonight versus doing something a little different. Um, Do you want like me to respond first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, didn't, he was talking to you. No, no, but it's public it's, comment is open. Um, no. no, I'm just saying I no. want, I think it's, yeah. if if given the opportunity, mm -hmm. I would allow, but it, of course it's up to the mayor. Um, but I think that information mm -hmm. is prevalent. But again, mm -hmm. I, we, I don't want us to be in the business just because we see something dangling in our face that might appear to be mm -hmm. a little bit more, um, I mean, we don't even know what the proposal is. So you can be proposing to give us a dollar more than what they're giving us. And here we are, we've bitten the, we've bitten the apple. Um, so I, and is that even uh, attorney West, is that even something that we can do or even take in consideration something that has come before us as, as a form of public hearing, I mean, public comment, when we're here for a specific item that has been put for direction. Yeah. It, and that is a, a good point, Commissioner Campbell. This is an item that has been put forth for direction um, and simply seeking guidance from this commission. You do not have to execute on a contract tonight. You don't have in the form of this counter offer, all offers, all, all issue contracts that have to pertain with real property have to be in writing. This was simply a, a, a verbal that was made right here. So you, you don't have anything to base a decision on. I think the, the the Commissioner McCaskill's motion to table to gather more information is a, it was a wide so one. I would not even put you on the spot to answer that. Um, I think it's been the echoing, mm -hmm. resounding without hearing from Mayor at this point that we're just going to, I would, I would be friendly to tabling this mm -hmm. um, as well. Not tabling it because of what was dangled in our face, but taking it in consideration of all the information that was presented to us tonight. And I agree we should table that. I think to be transparent and to do with things in an ethical manner, we need to go that route um, and table it for further discussion and information, additional information. Table it to what time certain? Well, that's what you all have to propose. I mean, I, I believe that they've presented very much, but I don't, I think it's just giving us an opportunity to soak into um, the true direction of which we would like to see it go. Um, and as far as the other oper the, the other person, the other entity, if they got something that they want to give to us, they got two weeks to give it to us. So, so to we, we can make here an alternative post for to the next meeting is absolutely. Right. Table. And I'm not talking about just the figure, I'm talking about a layout. We, uh, yeah, the whole what a, proposal. What a real, yeah, what a real plan. So okay. if you could tee up a 
proper motion and have the mayor repeat it and get a second to move forward. Mm -hmm. I move the table of this item until the next commission meeting. Second. The motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't Any think opposition? We get a true direction. But that wasn't clear direction. It was to table it because or for. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank I you. feel this up to them how they present. They they got right. together. We didn't give them direction no, on how they present. I, I would like to give some direction. Um, what is the city's future plans to use the river city river center? Did we have any? What are we doing with our cultural arts, uh, cultural affairs department? And what I hear is Mr. Douglas proposed to bring in entertainment bring in some cultural things for the community to enjoy. What is the city, what is our vision for? If we don't have one, I guess we can get rid of it. But if we are, we have a department and we haven't had any of the, the movement or the expectations that the citizens of the city want. And it's clearly, I like the ideas. And I talked to them, I told them, I love the ideas. I even like more that they're committing to not only just commit to the river, other areas of the city that's been underserved. So my pause is not for that. And we could talk and I, we could talk and say what we're going to do, but I would like to see some progress on doing some of those projects that we talked about. Um, and Mr. Alexander said he asked for what can he do? What can they do as an organization? We could entertain that. Also, maybe lease it until we make a decision. And then we could see what they, they could bring to the table. And we could see it. Like you said, see it, touch it, feel it. And we'll know from the conversations to the product that's laid in front of us. So the motion is out there. I just wanted to add what I just said. We can make no, no, no. I'm not making. I'm not making a motion. I, it's a comment on that motion. So I would like to say a like, direction about where the community affairs recreation department wants. Yeah, to well, go. that's a direction for our right. city manager and us as far as what we're with the what our vision is. I'm, I'm saying while we are tabling it, the, the wait period for us. Those are the things I feel that we should it's think it. about and what our plans are. It's the, it's the citizens building. It's our constituents building. It's just not ours to say what we're gonna do, the five of us. So I just wanted to bring that. I wanted to make sure before we leave, I put those sentiments out there. Okay, any additional Please. comments? It will be noted. Okay, thank you. We're going on to public hearings. Ordinance 2024-03, Parking and Storage of Vehicles, first reading, Ms. Krantz. Thank you for bearing with me, still figuring out the new software. Ordinance number 2024-03, I'm presenting to you an ordinance of the City of Palaka for first reading by creating section 94-263 of the Municipal Code of the City of Palaka as it pertains to parking and storage of vehicles generally, adding provisions for the definitions of various vehicles, prohibiting overnight vehicle parking in the right-of-way, prohibiting unlicensed vehicles for excess of 12 hours, prohibiting major repair of vehicles on residential property, prohibiting commercial vehicles in residential zones, providing requirements for parking and storage of passenger vehicles in residential zones, providing for recreational vehicle restrictions, providing for scrivener's errors, and providing for an effective... Mr. Bell? Excuse me, let me do it. I want to talk more. Go ahead. No, that, that's not... Yeah, I would have to wait. Okay. Oh, no, I don't want you to. <laughs> Mr. Griffith? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, commissioners, uh, the ordinance that you see before you uh, was developed um, out of our recurring Blight to Bright meeting. Uh, what we uh, are trying to address here is uh, providing some more clarity about where you can and cannot park uh, throughout the city. 
Um, so this was presented to your planning board uh, for input. And again, this is first reading. So this is another opportunity uh, to get input from the commission and the public uh, as we look to refine this document. I'm gonna do my best to give you just a general overview, um, but if there are specific questions pertaining to types of vehicles and where you can and cannot park, uh, feel free to ask me those. So first as we are defining what a commercial vehicle is. So generally it's anything uh, with a carrying capacity of more than one ton. Uh, and it also defines pickup trucks that may have a cargo bed um, or an attachment on the back. So anything that is taller or larger than the cab uh, would be defined as a commercial vehicle. Uh, we are defining what a major repair is, and that means the removal from the frame and the disassembly of the components of the powertrain of a motor vehicle to include either the engine, transmission, or rear axle assembly. And recreational vehicle is also defined. Now I'd like to point out specific to recreational vehicles uh, that you are permitted to park them within a residential district. We're just providing some guidance as to where and where not more specifically. So when it comes to the front yard or the driveway, there's a limit how long it can be parked there. So if you're preparing the vehicle or making a repair or getting ready to take it on a trip, it can be there for three consecutive days. If you have a guest that, that is staying with you, it can be there for seven days. Now, the other condition that applies in this scenario is that it cannot block uh, means of ingress or egress to the structure. So you can't block a window or a doorway, and that's for obvious public health safety reasons. Now, recreational vehicles can be stored in the side and rear yard. That is permitted. Uh, commercial vehicles, so long as they don't exceed that tonnage requirement, uh, can be parked in a residential zone. They just have to meet the specific locations of parking. So you can't park in what we generally call the parkway strip, which is from the boundary line to the curb or the grass strip or on top of the sidewalk. And if you're in the driveway, you're not permitted to block the sidewalk with your vehicle. Are there any questions? Anybody have any questions for Mr. Griffith? Just, just a comment. Um, yes, I, I, and my request was uh, the fact that when I asked for a specific section, um, because looking at the mini code, um, these appear appear to be like some new items as it related to um, the recreational vehicles. But um, I was told that that they were there were other areas within the mini code that these things uh, sat. So um, if if there's a way that where we could, um, I guess, reference. Making sure that we we cover all the all the bases. If we're gonna if we're gonna uh, enact something that is already in in play but it's not clear, uh, I think that's what we need to do from a standpoint of, of cleaning things up because it brought on a lot of questions from a lot of people in the community as it related to um, them not being able to um, park their recreational vehicles and if we got that spread all over the muni code with the different sections there need to be uh, a way for you when you when we do this that it references all of those locations so that you have a master one and you have the other one that point back so that's what i would recommend because it's not nothing new that is being put in from what i understand correct uh, yes, there is. This section is new and it's meant to provide clarity. There's also an enforcement component here, which I would prefer to defer to Chief Shaw. Uh, do you mind, sir? So uh, new section, I, I mean, I, I, I was told that it was it, it was certain thing would be striked out. So I, I would like to understand and know what what are, what are the, what's the new section before so I go. Up before I turn it over to Chief Shaw in regards to enforcement, what Ms. West, do you mind addressing that? This is all. Sure. Oh, this sorry, is a, an entirely new section uh, for the code that is being considered. Um, so it's it's not a provision of the existing code that we're doing a strikeout, delete, um, and modification of. The existing code has a lot of confusion, quite frankly, in terms of definitions. Uh, there's cross references all over the place. So if you really wanted to know what the rules applied for recreational vehicles, you're you're hunting all over the code. Mm -hmm. So this uh, seeks to make it easy for the public to know exactly 
where to go for the definition section and how those definitions are going to be applied to commercial and recreational vehicles. And like Mr. Griffith mentioned, it does have an enforcement provision as well. Okay. All right, I, I just didn't get a chance to look at it in detail. So that's just my, my reading is for that, for that piece of it. So least. just a reminder, this is first reading and I can make myself available to all of the commissioners to answer questions uh, about any provision of this that you, you may have before the next reading. Go ahead, Chief Shaw. Sure. <laughs> Madam Mayor Commissioners, as it stands currently, the enforcement portion uh, part of our city ordinance is not in place. So as you remember in past, we used to be able to write uh, citations, ordinance citations for those infractions that occurred on, on uh, ordinances within the uh, current code. That, that part doesn't exist anymore simply because something that was done between the county and the city and it has dissolved, there's, there's no more city ordinance uh, citations that's being written. So the enforcement part for now is based off the code uh, enforcement and then going from uh, liens if the property or the infraction is not corrected within a matter or a period of time. So that's the, that's the difference. So, so that's actually you're going to have to have more resources and get, keep going back out there just to check and see if it's compliant. So in, in the policy, I believe one of the things we discussed in the meeting was that um, it, it's a lot for a certain period, but it also excludes that it can't happen after that time frame consistently. So for instance, you can't move it off and then once they come back, it's, it continues to start over and over again. It's basically, it, you, you have it, it's a code enforcement option to remove it. And then if it comes back and it continues to come back, then it's a derelict option that they're gonna, that they deal with in another, on another level. Uh, I think Ms. West can, uh, uh, clear that up a little bit if she needs to. Yeah, if they are a repeat violator, there are different sections of the code that that would apply for repeat violations, uh, where you remove the vehicle for a, you know that three day time period, and then you come right back and do the same violation all over again. That's going to be a repeat violator, and there's a different section of the code that applies. So the need for this is a couple of different things, and I'm sure you all have been receiving the complaints and where we started from. And I just feel it, it's important to go back to uh, when we talk about the recreation commercial ve commercial vehicles is the parking on the right of way, as well as the uh, tractor trailers that we are finding in a neighborhood that we were tasked with being able to address those situations. So the uh, ordinance that we put together was basically to be able to address those those complaints that we've been constantly receiving. Um, to have something in place that was clear and direct and wasn't in multiple different parts of the ordinance. And uh, that was the task that we, we sought out to be able to um, establish. And then the enforcement fraction, um, what we don't have in place right now is what we, uh, myself and code enforcement have been asking for is some teeth to be able to put something uh, basically penalty wise to associate with those different complaints. When we come back constantly asking for a cooperation for things to fall in line. Any additional questions, Chief Shaw? Mm -hmm. I'm going to open the floor to public comment. Mr. Wilkinson. I think my questions were answered. Just like okay, thank you. Ms. Gibbons. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Commissioners, um, City Manager, Attorney, everybody. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tarsha Gibbons. My address is 130 West Cracker Swamp. I'm sorry. My address is in the city, 225 Still Avenue here in Palaco. I have a couple of questions, but first I want to start with this. I've been coming to these meetings since March 23rd of 2023, of course, in support of preserving and restoring Historic Center Academy. Now, I don't know if this is a form of retaliation or whatever you want to call it, but I do own a recreational vehicle, and it is parked in my driveway. I've owned it since 2021 with COVID and some of the other things that we've experienced in these recent years. So my family and I, we use it as a way of getting away. And it's, our, it's on our personal property. We haven't had any complaints in our neighborhood. I do not live in a homeowners association. 
So I do have an issue and a problem with anybody trying to tell me what I can and cannot park on my property. So tonight, I hope that we can get some clarification. Number one, I'd like to know where did this come from? How did it get put on the agenda? Who requested this? Was there any complaints? Because as far as I know, according to the code enforcement, if there is a complaint, that has to be made known and made public. Um, <clears throat> I'm curious to know because I've rolled throughout the city and I've seen several commercial vehicles, recreational vehicles, and I don't know if you're going to include boats and things of that nature as well, but I would definitely like more clarification on this and I would like to know how this got on the agenda. If this is a new item, what, what brought this out, I'm very concerned about it because it affects me and it affects me and my family. And there are other citizens that are very concerned about this as well. And there are more people that are now, you know, owning recreational vehicles. I know that we have a recreational res uh, resort coming to the old Corky Bills area out that way. There's also an RV storage uh, facility that's supposed to be coming as well. But like I said, I don't live in the historic area of town. I don't live in a homeowners association, so I need to know in detail how this affects me moving forward. Thank you. I can address um, quite a few of those concerns. First of all, the uh, if the commission so desires. Um, first of all, the, the reason this came before us, as uh, Mr. Griffith previously stated, uh, it was brought up during the Blight to Bright meeting. Uh, where there were numerous complaints to code enforcement of recreational vehicles being parked in front of doorways and windows, um, in front yards, on sidewalks, and it was causing uh, an issue that constituted blight. In terms of the applicability of things like boats, that's why we have a definition section. Recreational vehicle shall mean all non-commercial recreational vehicles, including but not limited to motorhomes, travel trailers, campers, vessels, boats, boat trailers, or similar vehicles, equipment, or apparatus. Now, they are not completely outright prohibited in residential areas. There are exceptions. You can have all of those recreational vehicles in your garage, in a carport, or in your driveway. You just can't park them right in the middle of the front yard. So that, that's what this was seeking to accomplish because it was starting to constitute blight because of where the vehicles were being parked in the yards. And so that is what this particular ordinance seeks to address. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else here for public comment on this particular item? <clears throat> Ms. Ms. Kitchen? Allegra Kitchens, 1027 South 12th Street, Palatka, Florida. Kudos to Ms. Gibbons. This, uh, the way this is written, particularly 94-263 paragraph C, it restricts my private property rights and your private property rights. Let me read this very quickly. Section C, overnight vehicle parking, the overnight parking and storage of any motor vehicle on my road, on any road or right of way is prohibited and unlawful. Overnight street parking is prohibited in is permitted in designated marked spaces in the downtown districts and in certain areas of the North Historic District and the South Historic District. Upon approval by the City Commission, City of Palakas Historic Preservation Board and Bo Board of Zoning Appeals, yada yada. I don't live downtown. I don't live in either historic district. I do not have the opportunity at this point to park my car in my yard, nor do my neighbors. Most of the lot, the older lots in Palatka, a lot of the lots are so close together you cannot park on the in the road. I mean, you have to park in the road. The historic districts have an exception that if they can't get to their property, the back of their property, they can park on the road. We need to have that same exception. And you look at the new subdivisions that are coming in, and I just found out at the last meeting that now property lines, houses only have to be five feet from the adjoining property line. Show me a car that's five feet wide, and you can drive it between the house and the property line. My car is at least eight feet wide, and I think a Cooper or something is even smaller than that. So you, we need to have the right to park on the public right-of-way, on the public streets with our personal vehicles, as long as we're not blocking traffic. 
And if we don't have that right, then we don't have a place to park our cars. And again, our personal property rights, our private property rights are being restricted. And I am 100% against this. And again, I'm referring specifically to 94263. My neighbors do, cannot get into their yard. Most of them can't. At this point, I'm now my street that I'm parking on, it is a dead end street. So there's no through traffic. But right now I cannot get into my backyard. So if you have to make an exception. You're doing it for the historic districts and the downtown district. You have to make an exception for other residential districts. If we have no access to, to park in our backyard and I'm not about to build a $10,000 garage to park my car in the yard. So please give us the same consideration that you're giving the historic districts. Let the residential people in other areas of the city be permitted to park on the street as long as they're not blocking traffic if they can't get to their backyard. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else here for public comment on this particular item? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Do we have a motion? I think I'm asking this to the Come on, Mr. Griffin. Give us well, you don't know, we'll say you don't know, say answer them. Okay. Come on, Mr. Griffin. I think Attorney West did address Ms. Gibbons' questions. Go ahead. Listen. <clears throat> Okay. So, uh, Mayor, Commissioners, I, I do believe Attorney West did address Ms. Kevin's question. So uh, I, I want to lay out some options for you. Uh, again, uh, this was presented to you based upon issues that we are having. That doesn't mean that um, it is, uh, let's say, complete. So if you want to see some changes and you want to direct those changes, this is an opportunity for that. Depending on the nature and extent of those changes, you got a couple options. The first is you make a motion um, and you direct us specifically which sections you want us to work on between first and second reading. If you believe those can be addressed between first and second reading, um, you could table um, first and second reading and just move this out, you know, a meeting each time. Um, or you could remand it back to the planning board and direct staff to work with the planning board on some modifications. But again, some direction would be helpful um, based upon the input that you've gotten from the public and the presentation that you received tonight. Thank you. I would, um, and I would, if you're entertaining a motion, I have a motion to make. Okay, we have a motion. You might. And the motion is? I was nearing 10, so. <laughs> um, I make the motion that we table this until next meeting, simply because taking in consideration uh, what has come forth, not only from staff, but from the citizens, I know that I will have some stuff that I would like to come back with. And I would like to just for it to be prepared and send it to staff versus me trying to lash it out tonight. Okay. So uh, is that your motion? That's your motion. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yes, I'm saying. I just was going to ask that the motion include tabling both meetings, uh, just because that's necessary. So if you don't mind, just another motion. No. Or, so it, yeah. Second. Oh, that one up there. Can I? Can, he said, can we state the motion? Do I? Can we amend the motion? Because I yes. just to I'm friendly with what. Uh, assistant city manager has provided. And I'll second okay. it. So the motion is to table first and second, first and second reading. readings. Yes. That's the amended motion. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. Madam Mayor, Thank you. just for purposes of informing the public, we've, we've moved for the first and second readings on the 28th and 11th to be moved to 11th and 25th. Okay. Yes, well. correct. Thank you. Just want to give those dates. Correct. Thank you. Ordinance All right, I print it to you for second reading and for adoption, ordinance number 2024-01, an ordinance of the City of Palanca, Florida, amending Appendix A, the fee schedule of the Municipal Code of the City of Palanca as it pertains to fees and other charges relating to Chapter 86 utilities, providing for severability, providing an effective date, and providing for Scrivener's errors. 
Thank you. Is there anybody here for public comment on this item or anybody here to speak to this item? Seeing none, close the public comment. Do we have a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. Ordinance 2024-02. Thank you. Again, presented to you from second for second reading and adoption. Ordinance number 2024-02. An ordinance of the City of Palak amending the tree protection ordinance to afford greater protection for trees and residential zonings, prohibiting invasive trees to be used as a replacement trees, providing for scrivener's errors and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Is there anybody here to second reading to speak to this? Now I'm going to open the floor to public comments. I'm going to open the floor to public comments. Ms. Duke. I'm Nikki Duke, I live at 105 Perry Terrace, Palatka, Florida. Um, I was here for half of that reason um, with a five and a half hour um, meeting the last time. And so I didn't really get to finish it, but I guess what I wanted to say was I felt like when I was hearing that reading that I do feel like whatever applies in churches and, and commercial property should apply to public property. If I understand correctly, is that what I'm going to read now? Residential. So, yes, yes. If, if they have to all go by that, then the person will, it, it does say what size tree, right? A certain diameter of a tree. And so, anyway, I want to make a favor of that. I'm a tree lover. So. Thank you, Ms. Duke. Ms. Kitchens, did she leave us? No. She's gone? Wow. Okay, I'm closing public comment. <laughs> Do we have a motion? So moved. Second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. On to resolution 2024 R58. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think we're nearing the end here. Let me pause the timer before it goes off while I'm talking. Although y'all could time me if you wanted. <laughs> resolution number 2024 R58, a resolution of the city of Palaka, Florida, authorizing acceptance of the final plat of Ivy Street and authorizing all required signatures on behalf of the city of Palaka, Florida and providing for scrivener's errors. Thank you, Ms. Ignama. I'm sorry. Uh, the item before you was continue for our last meeting, um, the last public hearing. If you remember, there were some concerns raised by a, by a citizen, a neighbor to, to the plat. And just to remind you, this is a plat for three, for a subdivision into three lots with the intent to construct uh, single family homes on each one of the lots. Um, you asked us to review uh, and check uh, whether what was stated at the last public hearing was correct or not. We went back and looked at the at the minutes of both meetings, the preliminary plat and the final plat. We also looked at the staff report. We got in contact with the former planning director because uh, to see whether there was any reference for the swale in the plat. And um, <clears throat> we didn't find anything. And the former planning director indicated uh, that she re remembered talking with them. However, she was referring to uh, the requirement for a swale for a drainage at the time of development of those lots. Uh, since then, we <clears throat> we reached out to Mrs. Kitchen, and and she spoke here at the, the last meeting, and also uh, the neighbor that was affected or could be affected. Uh, and we explained to her the situation. She came and met with us, and we explained to her that uh, that requirement has to be met at the time of development. She was satisfied, and uh, we gave her assurances that we would look after that. Okay. So with that, I would like to recommend a of the final plat, as shown in the resolution. Thank you. Do you, the applicants are here. Do you want to speak to anything about this? No. Does anybody have any questions of the applicants? Okay. Um, Ms. Duke, hopefully you have to public comment. I want to start taking Ms. Kitchen's place. 
<laughs> Vicki Duke, 105 Carriage Terrace, Palaka, Florida. Um, I did have some concerns about this lot, um, the lot and it had a proper drainage so as to not affect the houses that are already there. I know that that was low property and it was built up. So I'm glad you talked with Jerry. That was the other lady. Yeah, and um, so as long as I was going to be here, I was going to stay for that. But as long as your plan is to not, I know you wouldn't intentionally build anything that's going to flood the neighbors, but depending on how you route the water that used to stand there, I don't want it to run on the neighbor's property. Please, yeah, please. Come. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have public comment? Seeing none, close the public comment. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. With that said, commissioners, do we have any commission comments? Commissioner Campbell? Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Borland? No, we just got a. Uh... The uh, Magic versus the Clippers tomorrow. We got my list of students and chaperones. We got about 46, 47 thus far. And uh, so we'll be heading down to Orlando tomorrow. It's our sixth anniversary of doing this. Four years with the Magic and two years with the Jaguars. So um, we're going to go out and, and enjoy and give the, uh, the youth the opportunity to um, experience something that they may have not been able to afford uh, um, previously. So looking Mission. forward to that. And I got my list. Um, are you still on the list? I am. Okay. So um, okay. Mr. Jones, you still on the list? I'm not going to be with you. Okay. I forgot school was out. I got the All right. And um, the offer is still there. If anybody else wants I have to. a business that's open uh, every day. I'm sorry. Was, I'm telling you, my list was 40. Don't 40. think about me after. No, no, see, no, don't take it. No, oh, just I'm, I have I have an obligation okay. tomorrow night. Don't don't hit me in the gut like that. <laughs> all right, but that's all I have. I, okay, Commissioner McCaskill, do you have anything? None at this time. Thank you. Thank you. And it's also bippity boppity, whatever that is, tomorrow as well. On Saturday. 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 Boo. I'm still on Cinderella. Um, but anyway, yeah. Tell her to look because last year it was at the river, but it's now it's now the Jenkins Community Center Jenkins in the backyard. Jenkins Community yeah. Center. So if you have time, folks, please go. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Also, adjourn. Thank you.